there it is. There it is. We're good. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Lord of the Rings in review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. How you doing? Funhouse's own Elise Willems. Like Elise in the house. This is the week. This is the week. I love it, man. Get hype, baby. We got the big dog, Kevin Coyle. As a Legolese. Uh, this is what the community man. is cursing me as. Take it, yeah, embrace me. Amazing. Just me <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> and of course, we have Andy Cortez. Andy, how are you doing? I'm just stoked as all hell. I watched this movie like three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are watching it in many different parts here on uh, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games every week. Every Friday, we're reviewing one half of each part of the Lord of the Rings extended edition because they are very, very long movies. Um, if you don't like Lord of the Rings, that's cool. We're doing Star Trek on Tuesday, so you can check that out as well. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You can also listen to it as a podcast. Just search for kind of funny reviews on your favorite podcast service. If you want to get the show ad free, we have that option as well. Patreon.com slash kind of funny, where you could also be a Patreon producer like Mohammed Mohammed, Black Jack, Al Tribesman, and Connor Nolan. We appreciate all of you very much. I want to give a shout out to Carter Harrell for the dope music in the intro. I want to give a shout out to Cameron Kennedy for the dope graphics in the intro. I want to give a shout out, of course, to Kebabs who made the oh. dope FAQ in the description with all the trivia for all that you can follow along for all of the Lord of the Rings movies. And of course, the Lord of Corrections himself, the Faz, over on Kind of Funny's Reddit page. He, every week, has the, the sole job of making sure that we are are kept on track and that we're not we're not putting out falsehoods, tricksy falsehoods. You see, I'm learning, guys. There we go. Into this <laughs> Lord of the Rings like world. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the Lord of Corrections this week didn't go too hard on us, um, but but there was some interesting stuff here. Um, I think it's because we're getting better, Tim. We're we're learning, you know. We're learning. We're adapting. We're improving. Um, the first thing was if Sauron was to get the ring back. Kevin and Nick's different interpretations come together for the correct answer. Kevin rightfully says Sauron regains full power, but the free peoples can still come together to fight him like the last alliance. Nick saying it's simply game over is kind of right as well because the free people would have no chance of victory. The last alliance was the greatest force of good gathered since the Eldar days, and they still struggled to defeat him. The current kingdoms of men have dwindled greatly over the centuries, and most of the elves have already left Middle-earth for Valinor, which is the Undying Lands. Cool. Um, also why does Gandalf... Exactly. Why does Gandalf return as the white? Elise gets this perfect. So high five, Elise. You did it. Oh my gosh. I've honored. <laughs> he sent back he sent back to fulfill the role that Saruman was meant for. The wizards are Maiar, demigods or angels, sent by the Valar gods to guide and help the free people in their war against Sauron, who is also of Maiar. Faz, I just want to let you know I'm very happy that you're a fucking nerd because this is ridiculous and I appreciate it so much. When Saruman is corrupted and joins Sauron, it's deemed that two that, that the two powerful and corrupted Maiar are too OP for the good side, especially with Gandalf dead. This is why he returns as Gandalf the White, now the mightiest of the Istari wizards. Oh. Then uh, the the next stuff he did uh, wasn't necessarily like facts from the movies. It's like a little more lore based. Um, but one thing that I thought was interesting, and it's a little long, but it's worth it here. It's about names and language in Middle Earth. Um, Tim and Andy were laughing about some of the silly and generic names, which is understandable at face value. Tolkien considers himself a philologist more than he did a storyteller. Philology is the study of structure, development, and relationship of languages. Tolkien was an Oxford University professor of philology. How many times can you say philology? For 30 years. His books were made to flesh out the languages he developed, not the other way around. Almost every name you hear in Lord of the Rings was carefully selected. Gondor and Mordor sound cool, but they're actually elvish translations for Stoneland and Blackland. Uh, language is shockingly consistent throughout Tolkien's legendarium. What the fuck is a legendarium? Oh, it's the name for the Lord of the Rings universe. Cool. Uh -huh. Ask a I question. Thought was, I thought it was that second, that second land in Disneyland. No. <laughs> <laughs> To that point about language, that is one of the jokes that I feel like the you know the the Reddit in crowd of Lord of the Rings fans always makes, which was, you know, dude dude wrote a whole fantasy series to not for the series, but so he had somewhere to put the language he created, uh, which is like a really badass thing to do. Yeah, that's that's the second badass only to Legendarium, which is the coolest <laughs> freaking thing I've ever heard. Um, like another, can they make that man? 
And then there's that. Another recognizable example is uh, Moria translates to Black Pit. Uh, character names carry weight in universe, and they're often treated so. Aomer and uh, Gimli almost fight over asking each other their names. Most of the silly names like Treebeard and Wormtongue are just what other people call them to show disdain, Wormtongue, or to give respect, like Treebeard, as asking his real name is asking him to give you a lot of time, effort, and the story of his life. All this was to say, at first, it's totally fair to think some of the names are shallow and generic, but the language of Lord of the Rings might actually be the deepest part of it, especially Bill the Pony. Never forget. <laughs> Billy. William. Yeah, this, this is how deep that one was. They were like, he's like, fuck, I'm so tired. It's one o'clock in the morning. What do I call a stupid pony? And his neighbor, <laughs> Bill, knocked on the door and was like, can you keep it down in there, Tolkien? And it smells like that weird, what they call that pipe weed. They're like, oh, we got that good pipe weed. Yeah. The end of this oh, movie. I, th I thought you were going to say the neighbor, Bill, was like, uh, your voice, it sounds pretty hoarse. And he was like, oh. Oh, that would have been smart, Randy. Yeah, that would have been a lot better. It's, still, it's dumb, right? Like, Bill, the, the horse is a terrible name for the horse. Hey, man. Sure. Live and Thank let you. die. Thank just you, like Bill. Thank you. Please. So, guys, here we are. What do we think of The Two Towers Part 2? It's a good movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. It's, it's all right. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I really like this the second part of this movie. I think it's it's actually fun watching these in two parts because I think that obviously the second part is the more exciting of them, having largely the fact that I think an hour of this is just the battle at Helm's Deep. Um, I w watching this the first time, did, I don't think I got a lot of the intricacies of how the battle unfolded, so I didn't realize there was like the wall first, and then they fall back to the keep, and then after the keep, they're like in the in the, whatever that last little bit is, and I didn't realize how many of their forces were dwindled down to just like that last. 10 or so writers and that scene where Theoden sort of beaten down and he's just realized that like this is it for for Rohan and like they have no more choice and Aragon's like we got we do have a choice we could ride one last time and I'm like ride That's together tight. die That's together tight. bad boys for fucking life let's go let's go Will Smith yeah. and they ride out and as they ride out that you get the directions from uh from Gandalf where he's like okay on the fifth day around 1202 you got to look over to the, <laughs> not the west, look to the east, half of the tree that we did the thing that one time at, and I'll be there. And he's just <laughs> up on the hill, and his horse, like, rears up a little bit, and he's like, I know. I'm dope. Yeah, yeah he really man. does that. He <laughs> really fucking knows. He knows he's dope. Yeah. Uh, and that's the – it's so good. I mean, it's, it's so great. They really do a great job of building the suspense of being like, this is really the last stand. Um, and then, of course, when Eomer's people come in, uh, and they – it's so fucking hype. It's so good. The yeah. only thing I, I, the only thing I hate coming back to though is like I hate that he wrote, and obviously there's a payoff toward the end, but I fucking hate all the stuff with the ends. I just I'm like it's so it's, boring. Yeah, it's so boring. And I remember reading it in the book, being like I know why he's doing this. And when you get to the end of the story, it's a great payoff. But when you're in the middle of it, it's like the maybe the, the 200 pages of the middle of uh, Order of the Phoenix where everyone's just getting tortured, and you're like I want this to stop. And then of course when uh, when uh, Bill and uh, who are the brothers now. Fred and George, when they come and they wreck shit with all of their jokes and, and then bang out, very, very, very uh, a hype moment for them as well. But man, I'll tell you what. Do you think it's because you don't like Gimli and Jonathan Rhys Davies also voices Treebeard? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think it's that. Wait, do you I not think like Gimli? That, well, I think just Gimli might, might very well be the most useless part of this whole series. What? Remember when he has to get thrown and he takes everyone out for like 15 minutes? He's just. Holding down the fort? That was dope. Remember, remember before that where he jumped off a thing and fell into some mud and then got buried into a horse and was like, I can't lift it. And then someone else no, came on top no, of him. First of all, first of all, a giant fucking hyena <laughs> fell on him and it then was he started three lifting of them. it. And then some <laughs> other dude came on top and he kills that guy. And then another fucking hyena gets on top. And I I'm think just he saying, still lifts his that way out. Remember that part where Legolas got buried under a fucking dead carcass? No, because he wouldn't let that shit happen because he's the dopest character. Of course he's like the fucking Johnny Tsunami downstairs man that motherfucker let's was go. like first off if i saw it first off let me just, let's stop right here if we were in a battle and i saw andy skate downstairs on a shield i'd be like andy needs more to do he doesn't have enough to do <laughs> there's he's clearly got too much time on his hands you know it's like we're all working out we're all working and then we look over and joey's watching fucking dr disrespect and we're like okay we got to give joey something Don't, more to do no that's, that's well, he's lashing out so at everybody rude. at yeah. least at least what did you think of this movie <laughs> Jesus, Nick uh, took like 20 minutes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> first of all, Andy, as we've established in, in canon fan it. art, is Andagorn. Uh, he would be leading the vanguard like Aragorn right at Andagorn. the gate, mm -hmm. defending the, from the hordes. This film, the the culmination of Helm's Deep, you can't, you can't have that kind of just uh, fist. It's, it's, it's chest pumping, right? The pride that you as a viewer feel, the emotion that you as a viewer feel when you get to this 
culmination. And that's just the beginning. That's what the, you know, I know we have no future spoiler talk, but this movie, it takes you to the limit and then tells you, oh no, the limit's three feet higher. Just like, I can't unless, unless you're gambling. It's going to be high. It's underneath the, the pond. <laughs> I knew. I knew. Exactly bottle of mud. What he was going to say. I, oh, I thought you were going to say, was, unless you're Gimli, you get a little box for him so you can yeah, stand Yeah, that on. was a perfect That part was great. Right. I mean, obviously, the Gimli character is there to, to offer a little bit of comic relief and have a little yeah, bit of comic fun relief. Back, back and forth. Square. And I think all of that stuff really does work. Like that part where he's like, can you describe to me what's going on? And he's like, or he's like, what's happening? He's like, you want me to describe it or you want me to get you a box? <laughs> That's <laughs> really <laughs> funny. <fucking> great. That's <laughs> so great. Um, and and those two characters, I mean, I think, uh, uh, what is this? Jonathan Reese Davis and that's his name, right? Yeah. And uh, Orlando Bloom have such good care. They have such good chemistry together in this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm mostly just uh, bashing on Gimli. Cause it's oh, funny. no, I for the record, I disagree with everything you say, but I love every second that you say why people uh, listen to anything I say. <laughs> <these days. laughs> yeah. I enjoy uh, this a lot, like watching it. I mean, obviously, this is kind of the big payoff to to all the, the talkie talkie stuff that we've had for like, so at this point. What was it? 17 hours. Um, but yeah, it's a it walk super high. It's great. I think that they did a really good job kind of. I was never bored during the battle. And I think a lot of these type of action scenes, especially when it is faceless hordes, just kind of like striking at each other can get kind of boring. And it didn't at all for this. I was thoroughly engaged. And um, I think a big part of that, Andy, did you come up with an MVP theme song? Fuck, I was pretty busy. I was pretty busy all weekend. Okay. Do the wild wild world of you're going to you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to figure it out for some time because I am changing what MVP is. MVP is no longer going to be something we vote on at the end of the episode. I okay. want MVP to be keeping us on our toes. Okay. We can shout out what we think the MVP of the movie is at any point. So we can shout out podcast. Nami's whenever? Sure. Yeah. Because right. okay. I want to give my shout out to... The ladders, just ladders in general. In oh, so ladders! Wow. Wait, 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 are you talking about the big ladders they use at the I'm end, or the little all, ladders? Every time a ladder comes on, I was just like, "Oh shit, we're literally <laughs> getting to new heights here with how yeah. hyped this fucking movie can be." <laughs> yes, and it's just, it's it's you're filled with awe when you see that slow, um, you know, it's raise like a wave. of the ladder. Like oh, you see one go and you're like, that's the, pretty cool. But then it just like keeps going. And these motherfuckers, like they're so strategic. And, and this is what I love about the the choreography of this fight is uh, with the exception of maybe Legolas uh, surfing down the stairs, which was dope as fuck. And I'm hey, not talking hey. shit about it. They Every single thing school. seemed seems to have a like real reason to it and thought that wasn't just that'll look cool. When the ladders go up and then they have latches that kind of latch onto the top of the thing, so cool. it's like every step seems like it matters. When they do the whole 300 shield thing on the, the bridge or whatever to get in and then it's revealed that they actually inside had the big the battering ram to hit mm -hmm. the door, it's like, damn, it's oh. these little things that take it from, oh, that looks cool to this is functionally this really awesome yeah. and, and, and it feels like a story, yeah. not just a giant YouTube fight. It feels like actual siege technique. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah, the yeah. really cool part of it. With with the exception of the giant crossbows, which I was like, oh, this is a fantasy. <laughs> this is a fantasy movie. Those things were um, unbelievably big. And I was like, oh, what do those do? Nothing. They just fucking punch a hole through walls. I, yeah. I, made a, I made a huge mistake of watching this movie um, like around midnight. Uh, <laughs> and I'm getting towards like 1.30 a.m. Uh, I think this was Monday night or Tuesday night. I forgot which day it was. Um, and... I am just so pumped up with everything with, with with Aragorn saying show them no mercy for you for they will show you none and then and then Theoden going so it begins and, and like it just every so line is just so <laughs> fucking hype dude and like I, I'm so energized so late at night and then we get uh, you know for for wrath and for ruin like it's just it's filled with hype moment after hype moment after hype line after hype line and it's just it's so exciting and but i think it's really well paced too and i think we do need the ants to kind of say okay let's chill out for a bit let's go back but i really enjoy uh peregrine's um uh like mary and, and pippin's sort of role in all this where you know mary just or uh, pippin just wants to go back to to the shire and he's like let's just go back let's just chill out let's relax Pippin, am I getting the Peregrine? Yeah, Pippin. Yeah, Pippin. Yeah, Pippin and yeah. Harry. Yeah. Pippin's just like, Mary. let's just go back, bro. Like, this is all, like, we could just leave, man. We'll be fine. Yeah. And then Mary's like, dude, there will be no Shire. And, yep. and I think that's like a big character turn for him. 
where we see that, you know, they're finally growing up and they are, you know, having to make these adult decisions mm. and they're no longer just like these little children. They, and, you know, until the very, very end, we get all these added scenes of them or whatever. But I, I just, I love this whole half and, and I saw it multiple times and it's, it gets me every time I'm crying by the end of it. it there's hope in this world photo and, and we, ha and we have to fight for it. Like, Oh my God, dude, I just, I can't with this. So movie. Now. And Andy, like, <laughs> I know we're also critical. We're all critical of Treebeard. I have a history of being critical of those Treebeard scenes. You know, there were times when I would I would specifically rewatch Helm's Deep and I would fast forward through all that stuff because um, I'm like I just want Helm's Deep. But I think there's value in it in demonstrating Saruman played his played his hand and he played it wrong. He sent all those orcs to Helm's Deep, all those Urukai to Helm's Deep, and he left his own defenses at home weakened because he thought that there was no one that was going to rise against him. And fucking true, the fucking trees are. Saruman, yeah. you played your hand. I'm gonna I'm say you this know. right now, though. Saruman, not not the best general to put in charge of your troops. If you oh, didn't realize no. there was a whole forest full of giant tree soldiers that he would piss off very easily if he decided to burn all of them down. I would like Saruman, we, we, we cut the other forest down that where the trees aren't alive and can come and exact their revenge on us. But man, that last that scene where they where they break the dam. And it literally Very washes cool. all the shit away and washes it in. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, fuck. And he's stuck in his little tower. I, yeah. I, 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 love the, I love the line sorry, from Treebeard where he's just like, where he finally sees all of his friends. And he's like, I, these are many friends of mine that are all gone. I knew yeah. them from Nut and Acorn. Like, yeah. that's Which such sounded a, like a gross line. Just it's, actually a, it's actually it a wasn't. bar that the trees go to. It's called Nut and Acorn. They have a great cocktail. <laughs> yeah. <there>. It's just <laughs> sorry, really, really good. underestimates creatures that he perceives as Weak. inconsequential. Yeah. And that's a, a big mistake to make, I think. And, yeah, and people, people make that mistake with people, where they yeah. they underestimate people that they perceive as inferior and consequential. And you got played. Dude, Wait, you, were talking, you also when... know that Saruman hates, or uh, not Saruman, okay, that Peter uh, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien was always. You know, I've been watching the making of and all, and all these the commentaries, and they always mention that J.R.R. Tolkien was always scared of technology, and he he was worried that technology would eventually ruin us and and he w really wanted to show that you know Saruman is using all this technology to take over and and nature is going to find a way to, to correct the course and it's it's just so cool <laughs> like, when you, I love when he when the tree birds like oh fuck my, my, my homies are dead like hey let's let's roll and there's the wide shot of like the entire force yeah. and it's all just kind of wiggling yeah. <laughs> i'm just like oh shit <laughs> like y'all are yeah, he, fucked, he has, a, he has a, his line there and i can't remember what he says but i wrote it down so when we get to it I'll, I'll read it correctly but it's something to the point of like he was like they uh the, the other trees are going over the orcs something like that but we have uh, I got a bone to pick with Sauron, and it's like rock and roll or some shit like that. I'm like, oh, this is gonna go down <laughs> right now. The scene at the it's end where the, rock. the Urukai shit. run into the trees, and they're like, oh, don't follow them. And then all of a sudden, yeah. the trees oh. fucking shake, and it's just like, oh shit. All right, well, I guess the trees ate them. Yeah. <laughs> just violated them in that forest. Jesus. I guess the trees ate them. Let's get to the plot, man. <laughs> Let's get to the plot, man. Start the plot. Talk. I no, forgot. I don't think so for this one. Okay. Uh, Lord <laughs> no of the Ring, The Two Towers, Extra Long Edition, Part 2, In the Gathering Dark, The Will of the Ring Grows Strong. On the road to Helm's Deep, Gimli tells everyone that dwarf women look a lot like dwarf men and then falls off his horse like the idiot that he is. Of course, he went <laughs>, laughs at him, because I would laugh too. I'd be like, why, do you, why are you putting that little dude on the horse? Put him on a little pony. What happened to Bill? Isn't that what Bill was what, for? Yeah. Where's Bill at? Put Gimli on Bill, and then perspective wise, he looks like Aragorn on Brembo or whatever the fuck his horse is. <laughs> Breaks name hey, Here's the thing. So we obviously have Andy Andy Gorn, we have Legolese, right? I'm I'm challenging you, Photoshop experts out there, for something that I just came up right now based on what Nick said. You want to see Gimli on Bill the Pony. I want to see Tim Lee on Kevin. Tim Lee. No. Yeah. No. Yes. Why? Yes. We've seen the, my face integrated with a, with a horse before. They're very good at it. <laughs> it was really Remember, good. Remember, it's just the <laughs> eyes. They're very talented. <laughs> never stop. Never stopping. Uh, of course, as he falls off, Eowyn laughs at him while Theoden <laughs> tells Aragorn how emotionally unstable she is. Uh, and he's like, listen, man, maybe stick to Liv Tyler. And you know what I mean? Like, maybe you, you got eyes for this blonde girl. But let's not shit. forget that Liv Tyler's back at home waiting for you. Yeah. Uh, Ewan makes Aragorn some stew 
uh, and it's pretty apparent that she can't cook for shit. Typical rich girl. girl. Am I right, Andy? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, you know, get the cook to cook. If you know All of this was added. This is all the extended, by the way. And uh, I didn't really like any of it. it. It was just it was really out of character, I felt like, for... I, I I like it just a little bit for Aragorn's backstory because they have this moment where she's like, my father told me that you rode into battle with his father, which what is, I don't understand right. what that means. It turns out yeah. Aragorn yeah. is not bad looking for an 87 year old man. Dune to Dane blood. Yeah, yeah that's that, the only that, part. That, that's the only thing I like about it is that the fact that she finds mm-hmm. out and we, you know, the audience does get to learn more about. Oh my God, you're you're a Numenorian. Like what the, what the fuck? This is crazy. And right. he's like, yeah, bro. I'm like I. In my age, I think they live to be around like 150 or something like that. But yeah, it like, I guess in that age ratio wise, he's probably still around. They said around like 35 to 40 years old. Um, like, is there anything cooler in a fantasy series than someone that just lives longer than everyone else? No, it's cool as hell. It's dope. It's, it's dope. so cool. Uh, of course, later that night, Aragorn smokes his pipe and thinks about the last time he saw it live. Tyler uh, and and the uh, you know the old what happens at uh, at Helm's Deep stays at Helm's Deep rule. Yeah. You know, he's conflicted here where he's like, I don't know. We got, uh, what are we going to do? Anyway, he remembers a moment back in Rivendell uh, when he made out with Arwen on a chaise lounge while wearing his pimp jammies. And I'll tell you what, Elise, I have never identified with the character more in my life. Man, what a great moment uh, that we've all had. Am I right? Uh, he doesn't know his path, but Arwen tells him to trust his heart, trust us, uh, to which he's like, ah, man, I cannot make out with this blonde girl. I got to just I got to stick with Arwen. She gave me a cool pimp necklace. I don't know what I'm doing here. And then, of course, Miranda auto bats her eyes. And he's like, well, cool we might die necklace. tomorrow. Uh, then they make out some more. And Aragorn knows he cannot make out with Miranda Otto. Uh, back <laughs> at Rivendell, uh, Elrond tells him. They have another scene where Elrond tells him that Arwen has to go to Elf Heaven. But Ar- but Aragorn wants her to stay with him because uh, he she still hopes for the future of men. Uh, the next morning, of course, Aragorn tells Arwen he's not coming back for her. He intends to let her go to Elf Heaven and save her from the despair of war. Uh, quote. I am mortal. You are elf kind. It was a dream. Nothing more. And she's like, Man. why are you doing this to me? You know that yeah. you cannot. You Whatever you find at Helm's Deep is not going to be as good. And he's like, it's true. <laughs> uh, the anyway. has gone bad. You know? That's it what is, I always dude. say. I'll tell you what. I, I love when she, he tries to give her back the necklace and then right. she goes, keep it. It was a gift. Yeah. So good. Hey, so maybe they're not together. Maybe our Aragorn can make out with Eowyn. I'm not quite sure. We don't really have clarity on whether or not that was an official breakup or if they're just taking a break for right now. I don't know. But Aragorn being a good guy seems to be staving off the uh, the, the blonde rich girl for the brunette rich girl. They're both rich girls, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, anyway, the caravan is attacked by warg riders. Sc- uh, Scout very badly. C- uh, and then we get a very bad CGI Legolas kind of sliding down the hill as it starts to shoot. Adam, not a great effect there. Uh, Theoden orders the riders to the head of the pack while Legolas spots the rest of the riders, appro- the war riders approaching. Uh, Ewan wants to stay in the fight, but Theoden asks her to lead the people to safety. Uh, we get yet another beat of her saying, I don't want to be this like role that you think I am. I want to go fight. I'm a warrior. Uh, but he tells her to, to just take the people out uh, so that they can be safe. Um, I do. Yeah. I did love um, hearing Peter Jackson talk about this scene because he mentioned like, even he knew he goes, yeah, the CGI here, I'm, I'm I'm not super happy with. We just didn't have enough time and resources for a lot of this. And then, like, you hear Philippa and Fran, the, the, the other co-writers being like, I think it looks fine. He's like, yeah, it's just I feel like a lot of the wargs don't really sit in the world well. Like, they don't they don't really look like they're part of it completely. So it's cool to yeah, kind of hear. It's cool to hear a director be like, yeah, this this could have looked better. We just didn't really have resources or money for it. It, it works, though, and this scene works, yeah. and I'll tell you why. Because there's a moment right as they're about – Theoden orders all the riders to the head, right? And he's like, we got to go. We got to take these guys head on. Tells tells Eowyn to take the rest of the people back. And then Aragorn – Eowyn shoots Aragorn this, like, scared look. And Nick, then real, as, quick, Nick, real quick, yeah. just change all your E's to A's. Eowyn, excuse me. Because Theoden and Eowyn. Got it. Uh, Eowyn tells Aragorn like, <laughs> to take the riders out of the front. <laughs> And then Eowyn, excuse me, Eowyn looks over at Aragorn and she shoots him like a scared look. And then Aragorn kind of just has like a, he has a moment where he spins with this horse and gives her that fucking, (laughs) that thirsty ass look that he does. And I'm like, you're not fucking helping Aragorn. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't, you're giving this woman mixed signals and you're doing it on purpose. And that's not a cool thing to do. I fucking look good. There's two scenes in the face. 
<laughs> I, at least I'm going to ask you this. This is the scene number one. What is the other scene in this? This is a trivia question for you. And if you get this right, you get 100 points. What is the okay. other scene that Viggo Mortensen looks just like a thirst trap in this movie? Oh, well, for me, it might be connected a little more to the subject matter. It's when he tell for me, it's when he tells Thea and like ride out with me. And he's like so intense and just blazing. And he's and he's yeah. I, I know that I, is I, incorrect. That is incorrect. Elf, or he's probably elf pajamas. No, it is the scene where he, for no reason, is like there's like three slow mo shots in this whole movie. They're all on Viggo Mortensen, and because oh, okay. come on, let's on yeah. It's the scene where he opens up the doors and, oh, oh, and just oh, looks up, <laughs> and I, I just was I'm like, what? Thank, what thank God I'm sitting down right now. Nick, <laughs> Nick do that one more time. The slow mo look up. <laughs> I love it because when he does it, there's not like a majestic audio cue. There's no fucking score. No. Just, he just does it. And it's just yeah. like, damn, they knew what they had there. Like, and like, it was powerful. And it's one of those things where it's like, I don't remember this, the buttons on his shirt being that low in the, at this scene prior to it. But they're like, can you just, oh, just open up a little bit? Give all, give all, give all the, the people out there a little, a little, a little sizzle chest. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. Let me see if I can get these names right. Uh, the writers clash and Gimli gets it on with the war, but Legolas kills it first. And so begins what I think is one of the funnest part of this movie, which is the rivalry, the competition between Gimli and Legolas as they start counting off how many, how many uh, of the bad guys they've killed. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Gimli gets caught under a warg. Uh, but then, like, you know, like a man, he snaps the warg's neck. Aragorn has to save his ass from being eaten by another warg. Uh, the battle Real is... This is sorry. Go ahead, Andy. Trivia. Um, th they mentioned um, the scene where Legolas shows his weightlessness, where he's just sort of like flips onto the horse, uh, and it shows you oh, like how my it, God. it shows you like how light elves are or whatever. So cool. So uh, so Peter Jackson mentioned how he thought it was important to show all of the main characters getting on the horse. Well, uh, Orlando Bloom couldn't because of his broken ribs during uh, the shooting of this. And they realized, like, we didn't have a scene of, of Legolas doing it. So in post, we were like, what if we just show him sort of like, like weightless, his weightlessness and how, how easily, easily he could just sort of vault onto this horse. So they just did he it all in post. Tokyo drifted yeah. around yeah. the horse underneath it to get on top of it. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so needlessly cool. Yeah. Um, I think this whole battle is super fun. And I think that, uh, it, it, of course, culminates with Aragorn getting pulled over the cliff by one of the wargs. Uh, and then Legolas calls out for him uh, and pronounces it. Every time Legolas says anyone's name, it's so cool. Yeah. It's like Aragorn. <laughs> Aragorn. Uh, they, they and they also a little funny sort of uh, side story. It reminds me a lot of Mission Impossible and uh, Justice League. Uh, Orlando Bloom at the time they they wanted to shoot him getting on a horse like in in reshoots, but he had a mustache that he couldn't shave for the movie that he was filming at the time. So that's why they that just like did they just did no no no. It was I forgot what it was. They, they, Peter Jackson mentioned it, but was they he just in ended up anything else besides Pirates and Lord of the Rings. A, yeah, yeah a bunch of like the, Indies and shit. After this, he was definitely filming something that that required him to have the mustache, and he couldn't shave it because he was con contractually obligated. So they just CG'd him and like flying onto the horse. It's weird. It's weird that they didn't choose to because he had a mustache. Uh, shoot a scene where he's literally talking to a cell phone camera and a bunch of kids, <laughs> like that. It's in a, it's a fucking like medium close up shot on him and his lips moving independently of his face. I digress. I don't know where I got that. Top of the dome. Uh, anyway, an orc tells everyone that Aragorn took a tumble off the cliff. And at first, they think he's lying until uh, Legolas, get, in his hand, he's he's grabbed uh, Even Star, I think is what it's called, right? The necklace that uh, mm -hmm. Arwen gave to Aragorn. Uh, and they're like, fuck, he's really dead, because there's no way he would possibly part with that thing even by accident. Uh, Aowen has successfully, of course, lettered people back to the helm. So let me let's, let me clarify one quick. What is what is the full fortress called? Because is the whole thing that they go back to Helm's Deep, is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then there's the keep, which is the in interior portion of Helm's Deep, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you're saying yeah, but then the fucking keeper of the facts or whatever next week's like, oh, technically, Nick, the keep is just a chair that's in the throne room of Theoden. Is did I say that right, Andy? Theoden. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah, yeah. Cool, Brian. I got that. One. Okay. <laughs> you got this. Look at that. Look at that. Covering up my own insecurities by making fun of other people. It's the next Garpino <laughs> way. Uh, Eowyn is such let the people back to Helm's Deep, and then of course the two village kids are reunited with their parents, and I'm like, didn't she get eaten by a fucking orc? She lived? Are we kidding me? That's this so, is the hope. Such bullshit. Like she definitely got <laughs> murdered by it in she guy, got right? eaten. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then Theoden returns with uh, what little riders he has left. Gimli tells uh, Eowyn that Aragorn fell, and she is, of course, devastated. 
And she was like, damn, we were going to go deep in the helm, if you know what I mean, Tim. God and uh, Nick, I, know, I knew, I know. I knew I it was going to happen. I know. And it's, I not know. The, it's not the last time I wrote this. Because hey, deep in the helm though. is the thing I'm most proud of. What? So Theoden was all like, hey, we're going to go to Helm's Deep. And Aragorn's like, that's not a good idea. Like, we're, they're going to fucking fight us and it's going to suck. What were the other options? Like, how could this movie have went otherwise? I, th I think he just wanted. I, Ross, I think. I think he just wanted to be on the run. He didn't want to be trapped. He didn't want all these people to be backed into a corner. Didn't that, it, that was Aragorn's biggest fear. Didn't he want to yeah. go to the other city, the White City? It was Gondor. Called? Gondor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, wasn't he like, let's go to Gondor, Gondor, and he's like, no. Oh, Gondor. Gondor. Well, they have no, a. I think they have Gondor. a scene later. They're like, least, hey, let's yeah. call the people from Gondor and ask for help. And he's like, where were they when this shit happened? He's like, yeah, fucking. We're For sure, there's murdered. bad yeah. blood between Rohan and Gondor. Oh, like, yeah. That's a relationship that went bad. And the king of, of, of Rohan is like, oh, I guess we lost. God, I, I hate that scene so much when he just gives up in the, like, the, in the, like, keep or whatever it is. Oh, I love that scene. Because there's a moment where he, I, it's it's gut-wrenching at first, and then there's a moment where he rallies. And Andy already said some of the lines. No, yeah, but afterwards. But the shit he says, the shit he says as they're about to get on those horses, I'm like, hey, guys, write it down. Because if we're ever in a life or death situation, Tim, I want you to say those exact lines to me. I will hop on Kevin's back and we will ride into that fucking sea of monsters. <laughs> Why together. am I a horse still? In this I don't know. I don't know. It was good. riffing off of Tim's thing. I, I can be the horse too. I'll tell you what, people. Draw me as no the ass is... part of the horse. Kevin is the. It's a like cat dog. Whatever that fucking thing was. We'll be together, and then Tim could ride both of us, and he can pick which way. Yeah, right. horse's oh, ass. That's how me. I've always you see seen you. Saying? There you that's go. Put me good. in there, and and I'll, and, you, and Kevin will poop out of my mouth. Uh, let's Jesus see. Jesus, not a human centipede situation. There you um, go. Uh, Theoden gets a little uh, overconfident, uh, but as Wormtongue points out, Helm's Deep only has one weakness, and it's a small drain underneath uh, the, the wall, which I guess water comes in and out of. Now, this is a structural weak point that they uh, later will go on to, uh, to take advantage of Exploit, with a yeah. bomb that literally blows half the fucking wall apart. Well, it's, it's two so I'm like, giant it's bombs, right? It's, it's, I'm like, great. did you need that drain? Or could you just have put that fucking bomb anywhere near the wall? Because it blows a hole in it that's like 50 feet wide. <laughs> yeah, but Dude, like they got that out there. But they the got bomb underneath. scared up look like Bowser's castle shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I love it. So ridiculous. I guess maybe I the walls are so thick and there's like layers of... Yeah, you know, I got you yeah, have a structural drain. weakness point, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even though dom domes that arch it makes it stronger but i they got Kevin's underneath right it they weak they were able to get in the middle of it to weaken it to make it explode because yeah. if but, they just put it on the outside of the wall these all these walls are thick as hell but like, you have to imagine that there's you have to imagine there's some uruk general who's like that's really good we should make three or four more of those we can pretty much break through any wall am i right and the guy's like no we need a drain for that to work and i'm like what if we had five would five also, work if we just kept hitting the same spot with five I, of them? I don't think that explosives are, like, well-known. Because, like, there's this scene where, no, like, Worm, whatever. Is, it. Yeah, and Worm's like, oh, let me bring fucking fire next to this. Well, and, and Gandalf's the fire wizard. Like, that's his whole thing. That He's the fire guy. That's why he's got the... the um, fireworks and everything. Uh, fireworks and shit. Like, so Saruman... I love that scene where he's, like, making the bomb and he's talking about, you know, this magic powder that's going to... Uh, explosives. Uh, so much texture. It's so great. Yeah. Uh, Nick, can't let you gloss over Theoden too much here because I think all those scenes of Theoden wavering, Theoden's resolve or or his any cowardice showing or his bullheadedness showing is so important to his arc and and where he's going to go toward the end of the Two Towers and where he goes in Return of the King and the culmination of his story. Mwah! It's beautiful. It's well, beautiful. I do, and, and I do think that his character is, yes. I think, is fascinating because he's, he's, it's, it's more complex than than it would outwardly appear, right? At first, you're like, this is ego, but then as we start to peel it apart, there's a great scene it's here security. where he's like, we're gonna, he's like, we're gonna, no, it's not just that though. There's, there isn't security, and then there's ego, and there's also, there's a lot of things. There's a burden of leadership, but I think overall, there's a moment where Aragorn's like, uh, he starts talking to the troops, like, hey, we got this, guys. Don't worry about it. Aragorn's like, dude, you can't. Like, we're going to fucking die. And Theoden pulls him aside and goes, what do you want me to say to these guys? I love that. Don't you God. fucking know I know this? Like, you don't understand what it's like to be a king. And that's a great moment for Aragorn, too, where he's like, oh, I get it. Like, you got to you gotta put up a front. Even even if you know all your people are going to die, like, what the fuck are you going to say? Like, just, hey, yeah. let's, let's just kill ourselves right now. We got to put up a fight. And I think that's yeah. really good. Like, that's the one moment where I start liking uh, Theoden a little bit. Incredible. Like, I, and I, I, and I, I get it. 
This I think it's sort of, I think it's sort of dominoes because then we see an air, we see air going and Legolas uh, fighting, and he's like, "Then I shall die as one of them." And and Legolas, right? Uh, and Legolas is like, "Oh, I get it, I get right. it, yeah, I get it." Um, but we're getting ahead of ourselves, everyone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone talks about well, the weakness. Okay, even and then uh, Saruman, uh, Saruman, excuse me, and uh, Warm Tongue are talking. Is like, even if we, even if that fellow would take ten thousand uh, troops to storm the keep, he says, "My lord, there is no such force." And then Saruman goes, "Hey, come out back again." And I'm like, "What, dude? How do you walk into this tower and not see the ten thousand yeah, Rook soldiers that are outside <laughs> the fucking patio? Like, is there a back entrance to this that you can't see the forest? Or because there's one guy that's like this. I don't know where we're gonna get all these trees from. The guy's like that way." So apparently they're only you're only allowed to look in one direction when you hit the tower at the Isengard. Yeah. You get, don't look, don't go up in the 360 degree view and see everything Nick, that's going on around you. There's also really good like sound uh, soundproofing walls inside of there because as soon as they walk out, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Also, also, I'd be if I were that that guy from the previous episode where he was like, "Where are you gonna get all these trees from?" and and he was like, "Let's get them from Fangor and Forest over there." And I looked over and the forest literally looked at me and went like this: "Don't come in here." I'd be like, "We're not. <laughs> Let's call no Home Depot and see if they've got." lumber for us you know maybe a little no one has peripheral vision in this yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not I, anyways I, I, there, she... there's that moment where like worm tongue he sees the army yeah and the, the single the tear that yeah. comes down when he sees it oh, I didn't oh, that. <laughs> what a great character moment uh, of course, Sar- Saruman orders them all to storm Helm's Deep. And there will be no dawn for men uh, back another line fame. like another line <laughs> <laughs> hey, this line, this line, this shit's popping off, man. You could, you could probably, you could literally just scroll into the middle of this, of this part, like this episode, and just press play, and you're gonna find a fucking line that's awesome that you probably want to tattoo on your body. Yeah, um, you know. Anyway, uh, back at Fangorn Forest, Merry and Pippin's uh, spot smoke coming from Isengard. Uh, Treebird tells him that uh, Saruman no longer cares for growing things; he only has a mind for metal. Uh, and all that stuff, and that's back up when Andy talked about that, where it's like he's yeah. he wants this tech, he doesn't care about the trees anymore. Uh, of course, they mm-hmm. spot the massive army heading to war. Uh, back over on the shores of the river, Aragorn washes up uh, and is awoken by a kiss from the imaginary ghost Arwen. And I'm telling you what, Kevin, been there, been there. If you know what I'm talking about, of course. <laughs> I don't. Uh, if this were, I don't if this know were comedy, what you're talking about. Does anyone else? No. Now, now here, here's what I'm going to ask you guys. And I know they didn't cut it this way, but do you think originally Peter Jackson just did a fun cut where he's like, okay, Arwen's going to lean in for a kiss, but when Aragorn wakes up, it's it's uh, Bregel, the horse, licking horse. him. You know what I mean? Where it's like that comment. He's like, oh, no, you're not Liv Tyler. What did I do? Am I loving this horse? Uh, horse love. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Ar- Ar- Aragorn, uh, Viggo Mortensen slept in the same ranch as Brago so that – Brago could learn who he was and get to know him and shit. And and because like when when that horse starts licking his face, I'm so scared for Vigo Mortensen. Because like, what if the horse just like freaks out and bites his head or like something? Like, but it, it like you know he would uh I guess sleep in the same little cottage or whatever the fuck just so they got to know each other and and it wasn't scared of him or and you know it, it grew and comfortable he, to be with him. Did he adopt that horse after? Am I remembering? I don't know. That, right. I have no that's idea. some cool shit to do. That's like you're getting a, paid a lot of money because you can adopt one of the horses from the movie you just starred in. <laughs> yeah, that's dope, dude. And I don't know probably... how much CG was involved in this or what was going on. I don't know if horses just act this way. I haven't really been around horses, but I was thoroughly impressed with this horse's acting. <laughs> like <laughs> the, whatever the horse was doing, and like like he was acting like a little like a, a well trained dog. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, no, this, really the, do the horse shit? stuff was all real. Yeah, the horse. Yeah. That's in- incredible maybe Animal, they just put man. maybe they just put peanut butter on the right side of aragorn's face and they just let the horse lick it off nah, but i man, feel like he was even using his, his little hands in like an interesting way you know his he was like get up hands. get up his little, little horse hands oh oh you mean hands. like when it kneels down to like yeah. get on me yeah that shit's really cool yeah uh, of course, back at Rivendell, Arwen, we get a, a scene that I, I don't think was in the original, but Arwen tells her dad that she's chosen to stay, and then Elrond uh, paints a really, really, really depressing picture for her, and he says, whether by the sword or old age, Aragorn will eventually die, and you will have to endure that forever. You will linger on in the darkness in doubt as nightfall and the winter comes without a star. Here you will dwell, bound to your grief under the fading trees until all the world has changed and all the years of your life are utterly spent well, and i'd be like but i could go to starbucks still right like yeah. there's still a starbucks in this world <laughs> like jesus christ dad she, and it, this wasn't the theatrical it, it wasn't the theatrical yeah go ahead Kevin. Like Could, her. couldn't she still go to the elf world at that point 
I don't know. Why I don't know. Like, no, why no, 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 because why are the trains because they, stopping? They, they keep on they keep on the saying boats. Kev that you have to wait for the boats to arrive. And like it's sort of like missing the bus. If you miss the bus, you can't fucking go. You probably need to wait another but whoever like, knows. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, this is the last exodus of the elves. I think that yes. I think yeah. this is the last time they leave and then but the again, men take over like, and have performed all. Her world. dad is this cool king. I'm sure he could be like, Hey, we're in, in this in right? this place. Like Send I, me I'm, back gonna a Lambo. Bo- I'm gonna go I'm gonna go over and visit normal place. You know what sucks though? I, I do I've always I've always thought this that like the fact that it's the last uh, sort of bastion, the, the last time for the elves to survive or to live or whatever, and they're all piecing out, and it's going to become the age of man. Mm. That sounds so boring. Like it's the age, we're, it's the, it's the age we're living in now. There's, there's, there's no cool elf shit anymore, Kevin. Like it just mm. sounds like a boring place to be. It sounds like just it's us now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, it's it's Can I just say that that, uh, that stone sarcophagus cover that that is in Elrond's, you know, his the, his painting of yeah. the picture where it's it's Vigo's likeness. That's my like Han Solo and Carbonite. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like my equivalent. Like I wish I had you know replica of that and yeah, and everything. It's so heartbreaking. Like cool. the, like she Arwen stays the same age and she sees him, but she sees his old ass. He still looks dope as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's, he's still he's sexy old man. Because he doesn't lose his hair; he just goes gray, like Tim's will one day. Full gray. Uh, and dope. I mean that in a good way. Uh, and then of course he pulls the he pulls the old dad card. He's like, "Do I not also have your love?" And she's like, "Well, yeah, the, oh, yeah, yeah. It's a different dad." Uh, and then she cries, you know, and just like, "Oh, it's not good." And then it reminds me of the scene where fucking Bruce Willis, of course, calls and says, "Gracie, I know I promised you I was going to come home, but I got to break that promise." Uh, and I love you. And she goes, "Daddy, no!" And then the signal goes out as her hand's still on the monitor, and she's oh, crying. Yeah. As we did the dope. Michael Bay dolly out. Fuck, it was good. Bruce Willis did it better. I'm just saying that. No, no disrespect to Hugo. No disrespect to Hugo. But Bruce Willis played a better dad. Uh, and then we get a scene with Galadriel where she tells Elrond about the situation of Rohan. Uh, Isengard has been unleashed. The Eye of Sauron now turns to Gondor, the last free kingdom of men. Uh, and I'm like, why? Well, I'm pretty sure Rohan's a free kingdom too, but whatever. I don't understand how this kingdom's work. Maybe Rohan's like a fascist democracy. Who knows? Uh, the strength. A fascist the... democracy. Yeah, it didn't make sense when it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say dictatorship, but it came out with fascist democracy, which is a contradiction in terms. Uh, of course, she says the strength of the ring bearer is failing. In his heart, Frodo is beginning to understand that the quest will take his life and then she says in the gathering dark the will of the ring grows strong uh it works hard to work its way back to the hand of those weak ass men and we're looking at you faramir looking at you uh the time of the elves is over do we leave middle earth to its fate or do we let them stand alone do we want what what would bruce willis do you know what i'm talking about oh he gave his life to blow up that asteroid and save earth the least you could do is uh send some motherfuckers over to the helm to fight uh saruman's army and elrond's like you're right Mr. Anderson. <laughs> the Matrix. The Matrix. Yeah. yeah. Was it Anderson? I can't remember. Yeah, that's Anderson. right. Yeah, Mr. Anderson's yeah. right. Was it Anderson? I yeah, so you nailed it. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. Faramir, we catch up with him, gets an update on the situation. Saruman attacked, uh, uh, is attacking from Isengard. Sauron from Mordor. Gondor is weak. They don't have the strength to repel him. Uh, Faramir ac- accuses the Shu Hobbits of being spies to the orcs, but Frodo tells them that they're who they are and they're and all about that fellowship and then brings up Boromir and Faramir is like, whoa, you know Boromir? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, who are you, Faramir? Is, is bo- both your last names end with Mir? Does that mean you guys are brothers? And he goes, that's exactly what that I fucking means. I think that's the first names, right? That's We're, exactly what that means. We also We're just both, didn't both know the name, name like the last point. parts of their names uh, end with that. That's what I meant. Boromir, Faramir. If you, if you name a child in Tolkien's world, it has to be like, if my kid was, my kid would have to be Dick, you know? Or like my brother would have to be Dick. It'd be Nick, Dick, Rick, Bick. <laughs> I, could, I could write Dick. this series. Uh, <laughs> You got to, uh, to Bick before. <laughs> 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 I mean, the, uh, if, if I get in, go ahead. Oh, so, uh, sorry, this was, the the Faramir stuff. Also, for me, is a little tree beardish. Where I'm all, I'm just about the Helm's Deep and oh, the going, dude, going forward. Dude, I but, love the Faramir stuff because it's like, hey, um, look look at this guy who's just he's trying his best. You know what I mean? But like his dad has no interest in in him whatsoever. <laughs> And frankly, I've seen it my whole life. Like, you know, Tim's mom, that's how she treated Tim. Nick was, or really Greg like was the cool golden Greg. child. Yeah. Oh, cool and then Greg. Tim was like, always the disappointment. Mm-hmm. Well, he's taller. Oh, so it guys breaks my heart. From, uh, yeah. Yeah. Some real Tim, shit, man. Supposed- so, because, the, the, well, one of the things of great merit of it is Faramir 
his relationship with his father and feeling inferior. And then he makes that sacrifice later, future spoiler we can't talk about. But Tim, what? did you, I mean, yeah, did you, so, I know we've been saying Tim Lee, mm -hmm. but is this more of a Pharaoh Tim situation? I might yeah. be a Pharaoh Tim. I'm not even, I don't know. I guess. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah. Timothy, Timothy, dude, Timothy. how like okay. how upsetting though? And I know this is later in this thing, but like when when like uh, I guess this is later right now where Boromir takes uh, what was the name of the city? He takes yeah, that city, uh, and his dad comes it's, out. It's, it's the place uh, like uh, well, a really cool. Later. A really cool thing uh, is that if you look in the background, you see Minas Tirith. Um, you just like, says Minas Tirith. Yeah. Just admit it. Osgil it oh, Osgiliath. Osgiliath. And yeah, he, and his yeah. dad's like congratulating. He's like, "Hey, man, it's not just my victory. This is also my little brother's." And he's like, "Your little brother is the idiot who lost this place." Yeah, and he's like, "Well, yeah. you didn't give me enough men." He's like, "You fucking talk to me like that one more time, and I'll cut you." That's the word of so God. So sad. <laughs> I, 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 was, I, was, I was wrong about Osgiliath. I was wrong. My bad. Never mind. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to that actor because he was in Fringe, and I love Fringe. The um, casting was great. Like yeah. I believe oh, in his so brothers. Good. Yeah, and like yeah. I, I'm also happy we got to see Boromir again. I was like, oh, that's my boy. Hey, he's back in a flashback form. But you know, yeah. still your boy? and th this was in the extended. Oh, this was never in the theatrical. But they, they're like, yeah, really? we just want, we just wanted to show like the theatrical. Uh, it didn't. It never had them on the same screen. Like we never saw them interact. We never saw the oh. brothers talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm they, they did I'm it for the I extended. It's that cool though cool. because of course the point of the scene is not only to show the differences between the brothers and how they're perceived by the dad, but we also get the, a little bit of backstory as to why Boromir got sent over to the meeting uh, at Elrond's house to uh, to become part of the fellowship was low key to get that ring back yeah. to Gondor. So I, I thought that was really really cool because that that was cool. a moment of like oh shit he like he wasn't necessarily going in after himself. It was more that like he felt like he had to do that for his dad, which it, at the end of this this movie we get the same thing with the. Uh, Faramir, where it's like, oh, he's mm -hmm. feeling that same pressure, but he can stand up for himself. You know what I mean? He Real can. Because he's, the, he's, because awesome. he's the younger child. And honestly, the younger brother is always the better one. Well, um, I would say, like, I've never heard that. His, I've never heard that. Giving his standing in his father's eyes, the pressure is even greater. Because this is a really big opportunity to, to prove right. his, you know, Faramir, show his, his, uh, oh, fuck Andy, what's the line? Faramir, show his. Well, so it's quality know. or something like that, right? It's quality, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love that. He's like, he talks about quality, quality, all this, and then we get, of course, that, that echoed in Sam later, where he's like, "You've shown it today," and it's and it's great. Um, we do. Let's see. Oh, as of course, as this whole thing's going down, of course, Frodo's like, "Shit, I didn't know Boromir was dead. I didn't see him die. I don't know any of that stuff was happening." And then uh, they get interrupted because one of Faramir's uh, guys comes in and says, "Hey, they've they're sieging. What is that name of that town again? Osgiliath. Osgiliath." Osgiliath, I think that's what the town he says, hey, they're back and they're sieging that. We got to go back. And he's like, fuck, man. Yeah. What's with this town? It's like decimated. <laughs> Why does everyone want this piece of land? Apparently, it's beachfront property. You can't beat that in Southern California. It's, it's really At least, fun. as you know, you can't make more property. That's one thing you can't make more. You can't make more land. Unless you're in San Francisco, then you can just landfill shit and then it sinks into the ground. Uh, oh, so Os Osgiliath is the, the fucked up, destroyed town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's got where it, the Nazgul right. attack at the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my bad. Let's see. Of course, then uh, Faramir is like, oh, yeah, you guys had another person with you. And Frodo's like, no, we didn't have that person. He goes, oh, come with me then. Shows him that uh, Gollum is down at the secret sacred uh, bathhouse where they all, I guess, no one's allowed to go in this small pond for some reason. But, but, but he's there just down there asshole. fucking writing poetry. He's like, having I such a good time. <laughs> I love this <laughs> scene. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I love killing fish. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, I guess she would shoot him. It's scary because like they like, you know, they're about to murder him. Is I don't like how they treat him, man. Like he, especially towards the end when, and I get that he's turning. Like there's a heel turn. It's fucking obvious. This little shit has some problems. We get it. But I don't like how Faramir like keeps grabbing him by the neck. Yeah, he has yeah. such a small little neck. Everyone yeah. grabs he's him by the advantage neck. of his size. There is a I, lot I, more rib kicking than I feel comfortable with. You know? Yeah, I agree, Kevin. I agree. The the, the, the CG the CG on on Schmeagel here is phenomenal when he's in the water. And there, there's a there's a quick tiny little cut that I love every time. And I, it, to think that this movie is like this old and the CG still looks that incredible is where, where Frodo finally goes down and he's like, come on, Schmeagol, and he and he looks at him and he kind of does this like, like he does this lip thing and yeah. it looks so yeah. fucking good. Mm -hmm. And then he and then that's when he's like, Master says we must go now. And he's like, yeah, come on, we, we got you. And then that's when they eventually come and get him. But the scene, the the lighting there, everything about it, he fits so perfectly. Uh, in that world 
It is a nice scene. Uh, and of course, they they take Smeagol captive and beat his ass for no reason. I'm like, why, why are you kicking these things out? They're trying to get information. Yeah. I guess, man, but it's excessive, and of course, drives the wedge further and further between uh, Smeagol, Gollum, and Master Frodo, um, as we see. Uh, of course, down to their makeshift holding cell, Sam urges Frodo to use the ring to escape, and he says, the ring's taken me, Sam. If I put it on, he'll find me. He'll see, of course, referring to Sauron. Uh, Faramir enters and corners Frodo for the ring, uh, and it's I love this scene because he realizes what they have, right? They He heard him talking about this thing. He's like, what do you guys have? Finds the ring. Pops it out of his chest for a second, and in just that one second, he gets entranced by it. He's, it all it took is like a second for him to look at that thing, and he's like, oh, I am. I, and, and then he goes, uh, the ring of power is within my grasp. Uh, a chance for Faramir, captain of Gondor, to show his quality. Uh, and then Sam pleads with Faramir to help them destroy it. And he's like, what are you, crazy? That thing is worth at least 10 bucks. Uh, Faramir orders them to move out. The ring will go to Gondor, is what he proclaims. Uh, and off we go. Out in the field, Aragorn runs into the uh, Saruman's massive army. He rides off over the horizon. And the music here is really, really exciting. And it's got a, a sense of urgency and pacing. Where, unlike that other sl slow theme that they keep playing for the last movie, yeah, which just sucks you're balls. You're, you're wrong. the only one who thinks that. Yeah. It's terrible. Nick, I'm uh, thanks, Kevin. Thank you. I wasn't Thank listening, you. if I'm being honest. Well, Kevin and I, of course, company. you guys know, Kevin and I are the two-headed horse. That's, Does that's the horse true. have a back end? No, because it only goes two ways. Yeah, back and forth. Great. He reaches Helm's Deep, of course, and gives Gimli a big old hug. But when Legolas spots him, he tells, I love the back and forth here. He goes, you're late, and you look terrible. And he's like, well, fuck you, Orlando Bloom. We can't all be beautiful like you, you Brit British son of a bitch. Dayton Miranda Kerr. Uh, Eowyn spots them and is excited at first until Legolas gives him, uh, until she sees Legolas give Aragorn back Avonstar, at which point she realizes, fuck, man, I'm never going to get this guy away from that elf. I got to be a little craftier. Maybe I'll cut my hair later. We don't know. Uh, then Aragorn opens up the doors to the Great Hall, and this, <laughs> fuck, man. And I'm like, dude, you can you can use me as your plaything any day, God, Aragorn. God. Just, I don't care if I'm your second. You know, I don't care if Nick, I'm the second. How much do you wish you were those doors? <laughs> at, least, at least one of them. At least one of them. Andy could be the other one. What? He could open oh us God. up like, they, a, like in a my, You red. said that in my mind. I, I see <laughs> Nick hanging from a pole, and he grabs him no. and just opens it. And he's just like, ah. Uh. We don't You're need the a monkey hanging from a tree branch. We yeah. don't wear pants. <laughs> we don't need the visuals. Uh, oh, but there it is. The, I, oh. I, I love the in the director's commentary, they mentioned how this scene was kind of funky because they had to – they had to have everybody get stoked that Aragorn's back, but then they had to have Aragorn deliver this urgent ass message that uh, Saruman's troops are 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 you know they're coming you know, and so they were like it was hard. We were worried about balancing that because it has it, it, everybody's happy and everybody's stoked, but also we also need to get to the message. So how do we sort of like um, how do we uh, differentiate and have enough time for one happy moment? And then enough time for this bigger urgent message moment. And I think they fucking nailed it, dude. Uh, of course, okay. he goes there to tell Theoden that all Isengard is empty, 10,000 strong at least. It is an army bred for a single purpose, to destroy the world of men. They'll be here by nightfall, to which Theoden, uh, in front of all of his people, replies, let them come. They will break upon the fortress like water on rock. Oh and I'm like, God. even at that point, I was like, I'm starting to believe this guy. We got a chance. That is some <laughs> cool shit. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay, guys. But <laughs> like, what happens good. when water hits rock for a long time? Erosion. You know uh, it wears it away, uh, mm -hmm. especially when it's got a big old bomb that it stuffs right in your drain pipe. Yeah. 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 Theoden, uh, of course, this is all false confidence. And he says, they come to destroy Rohan's people do down to the last child. But Theoden knows that it ain't going to end well. He pulls him aside. Uh, he says, there's no He's like, there's no one left to come to our aid. Aragorn tells them that Gondor will come, but it's a bit of a sore spot for Rohan. Gondor apparently, I guess this is like a Brittany K. Fed relationship. It just didn't end very well. Maybe Gondor got to keep the kids, but Brittany got to keep the money. I don't know. Uh, Aragorn tells <laughs> Wait, did that relationship him that did not end well. No, it didn't end well at all. Uh -huh. uh, over in uh, in the forest, Treebeard bores the shit out of all of us by tearing, telling Merry and Pippin about Ent Moot uh, and what we could, what could be more interesting, at least, than just a bunch of trees hanging out together. Yeah, otherwise it's known as a park. The neck, it's what it represents. Oh, my God. It represents the symbolism. Is, apparently, back <laughs> in the day, when was this book series written? In the 50s or 60s? When did he write these? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Apparently, publishers wouldn't publish a book unless it was a 1,000 pages. So he's like, I'm going to write 500 pages of two fucking trees talking to each other. You know the, otherwise the known as just two trees. The opposite is true. He tried to publish it as one big book, and they were like, it's, it's more than 1,800 pages. We need to split it up. I did not know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would have been like that as an editor. I'm like this, you know. You can you can stay. You can shave off about 1,700 pages if you cut all the book sh- or the tree shit out. <laughs> Just cut it all out. And he's like, no, the tree stuff's important because it's pacing and because we have to understand that the trees are going to be integral into the end of this movie or the end of the series. And they're like, I don't think so because I'm skipping across and I just see him kind of fight a little bit. It doesn't matter. You want to uh, wait? A minute, hold on. You wanted to cut the trees out? I do want to. I do want to trim the trees. Trim yeah, at least the trim them, Tim. At least wow. trim the bushes. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Listen up, fellas, because today we have a new Manscaped product alert. Manscaped just released the Weed Whacker nose and hair trimmer. Take a look in the mirror, and I guarantee that you'll see some hair sticking out of those holes. You know what I'm talking about, Andy? I know you got those nose hairs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got some little little stragglers popping Mm -hmm. out every once in a while. and I always think it's the mustache poking up, and then I just like this damn mustache. Nope. It's it's, it's one little stupid nose nose hair hair poking. poking down. God damn. And that's the problem. You can deal with it now. Manscaped's forever changing the grooming game with the Weed Whacker. This nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Oh, man, it's hard to read this. Uh, The premium Manscaped Weed Whacker uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system. Here's the thing. I only have the ear hair, but I do have the nose hair. So this has been super valuable. I don't even need to use it for all its uses. It's just it's kind of a what's-your-use case because a little Manscaped goes a long way. Uh, Its intelligently contoured design enhances the trimming experience and is waterproof, which makes for easy operation and cleaning. Have you ever pulled your nose hair out with your fingers, Kevin? I use my Leatherman. (laughs) <laughs> God, what? Well, I, it hurts <laughs> really badly tim sometimes it grabs like four or five and oh, 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 oh. i don't know that it tears stuff up there but it gets close your eyes get so watery right? so water i'm sneezing <laughs> so hard i need a better solution tim <laughs> i got one for you uh you can get 20 percent off in free shipping with the code morning at manscaped.com Thank you, Manscaped, for keeping our pubes trimmed and our hairs and our holes looking nice. You can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code morning at manscaped.com. Once again, that's 20% off and free shipping with the code morning at manscaped.com. Kevin, please use this. Please get this. I don't want you to. I need to hurt something yourself. better. And next up, shout out to ExpressVPN. We all know that ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, but there's something that you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Now that so many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. Um, You can use it to watch The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary that we've been talking about for the last month or so. Um, It's not available on Netflix in America, but it is in other places, and you can use ExpressVPN to get it. ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think that you're located. Uh, You can choose from almost 100 different countries, and it's not just Netflix. It's anything. It's YouTube. It's Hulu. It's any any video product that you're using. Uh, There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but ExpressVPN is ridiculously fast. Uh, There's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD no problem. Uh, If you visit the link right now at expressvpn.com slash morning, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash morning. One more time, expressvpn.com slash morning. Back to the plot. Glad you asked, Tim. An ent moot is apparently a meeting where a bunch of trees get together and decide whether or not they're going to go to war. Uh, back at the Helm's Deep, Eowyn wants to fight with the men. Uh, she she wants to fight alongside Aragorn, but he's like, no, you got to go. You got to go in there and protect all the women and children. And she's like, dude, one of these days I'm going to pull a fucking Mulan on you. And I'm just going to come straight at you. You're not going to know who I am. I'm going to wear a mask and just stab you in the back. And he's like, that's going to happen. And that's not um, the plot of Mulan. That's not what happened with Mulan? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a dragon? <laughs> yes, there was. There, I think there uh, might have been two dragons, but we don't see the one of them. I like the little one played by Eddie Murphy. Uh, Mushu's not course. in the new one. He's not in the new one. Well, we'll see what happens. That's a heartbreaking, you know what I mean? Like. Also, no songs. I know. It's well, really disappointing. Kevin, yeah. we can go see it together, and I'll sing in the theater if that's going to make you comfortable. I would like that. I'll make a man out of you. you. <laughs> We're going to go deep in the hell. No, too far. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get some of that good pipe weed. We'll okay. remember it. Uh, Aragorn <laughs> walks amongst the ranks of the Rohanian soldiers, uh, most of whom are too old or too young and inexperienced. Legolas tells him that they cannot win this fight. He says, 300 against 10,000. What is this? A Zack Snyder film? <laughs> uh, but Aragorn insists that they fight, even if it means his death and Gimli's, because Gimli, as we all have decided, is completely useless. We like Theoden. Gimli has a crisis of faith uh, with Gamelin 
who continues to give everyone the poopy face. He's always like, I don't like what I'm doing right now. I have to dress the king. It's weird. Uh, and he says, your men, my lord, will follow you to whatever end. And he says, whatever end. Where is the horse and the rider? Where is the horn that was blowing? They have passed like rain on the mountains, like wind in the meadow. The days have gone down in the west behind the hills into the shadows. How did it come to this? And Gamlin goes, dude, you got to be a little bit more optimistic, bro. <laughs> that is some dark shit to be saying in front of people. We don't like it. I love the lighting. I, I love the lighting and the way all this is shot. It, it's so like eerie and, and kind of creepy, you know? Mm -hmm. Question for you guys. Because um, a lot of these people kind of look the same, especially when they have helmets on. Wh where'd Carl Urban go? He's, he, he's part of a different group. So well, funny enough, wait, Carl, Carl Urban, Urban's in this Carl movie. Urban's, Carl Urban's character in the book is actually in Helm's Deep, fighting oh, with everybody. But I didn't know that. They, but yeah, they just they changed it for the movie. Wait, who's I, Carl I Urban really, in this? For Carl the purpose Urban's of the brother or the cousin of, of he's Aylmer. Aylmer. He's Aylmer. He's Aylmer. Aylmer's brother the and then oh, nephew. I remember us Aiden. talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was the one that was excommunicated from yeah. Rohan yeah, yeah, by yeah, yeah. Wormtongue. And yes. is but riding he, around with what I thought was like twenty dudes, but apparently he has at least a thousand people. I think they said in more. the last movie it was two thousand, right? Was it two thousand? Is that what it was? Um, it's just a lot of people to take with you when you leave. He, hey, but yeah, he pops up with. Uh, he, like, can you imagine you know, him, that? And like, Ga him and Gandalf are just popping up at the end? Hey, like, all right, here we you're are. Banished. Wait, okay, so that was him at the end with Gandalf. Yeah, yeah that okay, was Carl. okay, cool. That's what I thought. I That's who Gandalf went to get. Okay, okay, right, cool. that was where he went, yeah. Uh, could you Joe imagine Pumman. that order when you guys are drunk at the uh, at the company meeting? It's like a thousand hamburgers at McDonald's, Tim. <laughs> like, I got 2,000 guys and they do it. How many of those fucking cheeseburgers <laughs> can you guys make? Can you make 2,000? <laughs> How about 1,500? Uh, let's see, back at Fanghorn, the trees have only just finished saying good morning. Uh, man, Tolkien really like wasting time. Uh, Aragorn gives a kid named Haleth a pep talk. And he's like, there's always hope, man. And the kid's like, I don't know, man. This seems pretty bad. And the king's up there ready to fucking commit Harry Carey. And he's like, don't look at him. I'm the real king. Uh, Dude, I, I love that. Like, I, I just love the speech there. Like, there is always hope. I, I Like, that scene gets me every time. Uh, and it's Aragorn's turn. It's his turn to, to actually being like, you know what? Maybe we, do, maybe we do got this. And maybe if we just fucking fight hard enough, we can actually win. Fun fact about the kid. That's, um, I, I believe it's either Philippa or Franz, one of the writer's sons. Who cool. uh, who acted as that little child or whatever, but then when they went back to do ADR four years or several years later, his voice had gone through puberty, oh. so they had to get some other child actor to they had voice to get Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Wait, why did they do ADR so far later? Oh, is there any hope, Eric? Because yeah. they did, they shot these movies like for a year straight, right? So you figure that post production on this one didn't start for like two or three years after is they that shot. How that works. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe two years. But either way, Kevin, you don't understand. When you were a kid, don't you remember? One day you're like, hello, everybody, I'm a Harry Potter. And the next day you're a 50-year-old smoker. You're like, I just, the life, it's so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with mm -hmm. Cool Greg outside. I want to hang out with Cool Greg so bad, but we can't. It's illegal. Uh, of course, <laughs> that's a, there's a smash cut with uh, with that. Where he's talking to Halif, and he immediately starts just aggressively dressing in chainmail. Uh, this is when Legolas <laughs> comes over to, to apologize, and he says, we have trusted you this far. Uh, and you have not led us astray. And to which I would have been like, did he not lead you astray? Because currently, let's take stock of where we currently are. We're held up in a place with no exit, and there's 10,000 people coming to kill us. Not Dude, good. not the best leadership on this one. But so whatever. the weirdest fact that I don't believe, but this is what Peter Jackson said, was that the guy who made all the chain mail worked for I don't know how many fucking years just only making chain mail for this, this whole, movie. Remember I, I mentioned and, that. And his and his, and his finger his fingerprints wore off. Yeah, the special features you see people just cool. like linking yeah. by hand this tiny chain mail. I, and I he said, said that this... he said that he did it for so long that his that he was like, yeah, the guy who did it, his fingerprints are no longer there. Crazy. His fingers are just smooth and shiny like, now. He's gonna <laughs> open that door so many times that yeah. <laughs> yeah they, I'll tell you what, right well, now though, you look that good. That door was opening for you. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> They've uh, since cool. developed a way to 3D print and uh, make chainmail that way. Like that looks really realistic. So those days are done. Dude's gonna get nope. his fingerprints back. Yeah, they're gonna come back. Maybe, maybe he <laughs> wanted his fingerprints gone so he could either be in Men in Black or a master thief. Yeah, you ever think about that, Kev? You don't have fingerprints, they can't find you. They don't gloves. know. Gloves. You. you just wear gloves. Is that a thing? Is that what I'm doing you can't wrong? Get <laughs> reported. Outside a horn blows, but that ain't no orc horn, baby. That sounds like an elf horn. Uh they roll out and the Rohan soldiers watch as ranks 
of elf archers file in, led by uh, Haladar. Haladar, he's back. And he says, an allegiance once existed between elves and men. Long ago, we fought and died together. We come to honor that allegiance. And he cool. and, and Aragorn's cool like, line. thank fucking. Like, Aragorn's like, thank God. You are most <laughs> welcome. <laughs> you were going to die. God. We were God. Like, I mean, we're still scene, pretty fucked, but. This is just like where, it start, where we start to feel the momentum coming. And yeah. uh, the elves were not in the book the, in this part. The elves did not fight in Helm's Deep. They didn't come back to help the humans. They were fighting off their own shit uh, back in, in Rivendell. Um, but Peter Jackson's like, yeah, we just felt like we had to have him here because this is sort of yeah. like the it's hoorah moment. This is where it yeah. gets really exciting. And I also think given like Aragorn's relationship to the elves, seeing the elves show up to essentially support him in a dire time is is just really great on an emotional level. Yeah. Well, he has a really yeah. great moment too where he sees yeah. him and he, he breaks that sort of stone wall and like is very excited to see his friend and be like, Dude, thank you. You know, yeah. um, this is a great moment. This whole thing, this is where the hype train starts to build, ladies and gentlemen, because as these elves mount this wall and everyone gets all up on it and they start getting ready, who shows up? Of course, the orc army uh, shows up and starts marching and they are scary. And, and, and to add insult to injury, it starts to rain as if uh, as if God's trying to tell the armies, I'm pissing on you because you are going to lose. Aragorn tells the soldiers, oh. Just sh- what's up? I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say the one shot of the uruk standing on the rock. With yeah, the sword out, that. and then it comes wide, and you see, oh man, so it, cool! It, and it's crazy how I think really good and convincing the CG looks of the crowds. Where like I just didn't expect that stuff to age too well, and I think that I think it does them a good service of them being in the dark and it being rainy, and I think that the CG really shines and it's it's convincing, you know. Well, for sure, from a production standpoint, adding rain to it probably helped hide yeah. some of the scenes. As, as they do, but uh, it also adds, of course, to the ambience and the, and the scariness of the fight. I gotta say, it is unfortunate for streaming services, especially because this is just in HD and not uh, 4K, where it, like the oh, rain was just a jumbled mess. Yeah, when it when it's raining, mm. streaming services like they can't the handle. Rate. It's, yeah, it's too much yeah. going on. So yeah, it's a bummer. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, as they approach, Aragorn tells all of his soldiers to show the orcs no mercy, for you shall receive none. Uh, they square off, but Gimli can't see because he's useless and short. Uh, and then he like, Alyssa says, shall I describe it to you, or would you like me to find you a box? And he's like, you know what? Go get me a fucking box. I Whatever. love the like, laugh. You know, go get me a fucking box. I love the laugh. And like this is like we're starting to see the friendship build. It's like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he just yeah. laughs like that's a good one, Doug. <laughs> uh, the orcs start pounding their spears, and of course, the echoes can be heard in the caves down below where all the women and children are hiding. And then they square off, and there's a moment of tension. And then one dipshit Rohan archer accidentally lets loose. And I love how this starts because it doesn't start with a big battle cry or a Braveheart moment where the soldiers are like, tonight we died in hell or whatever, which is from 300, not Braveheart. I know it's fucking <laughs> yeah. Lord, Lord of the Facts. Don't, don't tell me I got that wrong. It just they square off and everyone's like, how do we do it? Are we, how do we start this? Do you guys come first or do you? And then one dude just accidentally lets go of it and it hits one of the orcs. And this guy, the guy, ne- the look on the guy next to him is great because he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Did that, that motherfucker just kill Bill? That guy, guy just killed Harry. But, Let's but, go. But, but again, I I love that these are all the old and and young kids that they were having to 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 start this war. And like I I think we kind of like skipped over that a little bit. But I think that's so emotionally impacting to see these young children and these old fucking men being like, I don't know how to fight. I've never fought in my life, but I guess we're about to do this. And well, yeah, the guy who, le- the guy who lets go of the arrow is probably like 80 years old or something. 80, yeah. <laughs> well, they, they certainly beat you over the head with the editing where when Aragorn's looking around being like, it's hopeless. They show like, a 14 year old trying to figure out how a bow works then an 80 year old trying to get a sword up then a fucking baby like playing with the knife and you're like what <laughs> <laughs> where did all these people go i get it anyway the, the uh, moment where an iterary pass where he talks to the little kid it's yeah. like this is a child yeah, what yeah. the fuck is he gonna do throw rocks from the top though we see him hey. actually go and fight hey, he's he a does. good meat shield kevin good meat shield <laughs> uh, <laughs> he'll take a lot of these arrows for us <laughs> And then it's on, baby. Archer versus Archer as the hordes approach with ladders to take the wall. Aragorn orders swords. as And then and man, as those ladders hit, Aragorn orders swords. And they start to get it on. Uh, an elf falls off the wall and screams in the most fucking stock sound effect. That, that It's that icon. It's, it's not the, the Wilhelm. Wilhelm scream. It, wasn't I it? Think, I thought it was. No, I don't think it's the Wilhelm it scream. It's, but it's very. It is, is it? There you go. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> it, 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 anyway. If you know what to listen for, it's in it's in every movie so many times. Uh, it's so bad. I, I get I get so scared every time when uh 
when Aragorn orders his armies to do an, uh, a volley and the arrows like fly in it's between their heads. <laughs> like, nah, dude, shoot yeah. a little higher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he screams, of course, uh, to leg. Uh, so, okay, so the Gimli starts jumping off and starts hacking people with the dick. He screams to Legolas two already, but Legolas already has eighteen, and the competition rages on. Uh, back in the forest, the trees are still talking, still talking trees. Uh, they've just agreed that Merry and Pippet are not orcs, and Merry's like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I what? love that. What are you doing?" But that's but that's what I love. Like you know, we 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 feel like okay, enough these these fucking trees. But that's what they're also doing in the movie, like the the Peter Jackson or. Tolkien wrote it that way to be like, so even like Mary and Pippin are kind of us in the audience being like, guys, we're still talking about this. What are we doing here? Like, I love that. That's kind of the point of it. You know, uh, of course, he gets angry with them and says uh, his friends are out there and they need our help. Hurry up uh, and, and decide. And he's like, well, it's not how things are done here, man. We, we got to talk for a long time back at the deep. Gim Gimli is racking up kills left and right as Aruk forces march towards the gate. Uh, Theoden gets Theoden, excuse me, gets a big old head until the orc uh, who lit. He's like, "We're winning! It's totally great!" And then, of course, they bring in the guy. They bring in the orc that's responsible for lighting the Olympic torch, and he's just yes. like, bum, 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 bum. "He's like, their oh, best he's here. runner. He's here. I can't guess, yeah. man." Because this guy says they committed to that guy dying. Like, oh yeah, I, I, he could have been like. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Instead, he's yeah. like, fuck it. I'm diving in. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, that's like, impressive. Maybe shoot like a fiery arrow into that thing and not waste the guy. But yeah, he 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 was he was he was in. Uh and he Nick, of course Satan, Satan's reaction, his face when, yeah. when you know the whole the whole castle shook. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Like no, I love great. I love that. I love I love the fear that when Aragorn notices him and being like, get this Take fucking guy and, and 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 Legolas, Legolas is like trying to and he's hitting him. It. And he's not going down. Like, this guy has uh, so much, it so much like, me off fearlessness. He, he's only talking to Legolas because there's so many other people shooting arrows, archers right there. It's just like, yeah, you know, tell Legolas. everyone to just. Legolas. Legolas, what? Fails? You know? I mean, I mean, that's the best guy for the job, Kev, you know? But you know what's uh, better I, than the best guy for the job? Ten mediocre guys for the job yeah, with the yeah. best guy for the job shooting. Yeah. That's kind of fun. better. Kevin's right. Uh, <laughs> it's fair. The Uruk, of course, start attacking the gate as well with the battering ram. And this was that part that Tim talked oh, about. But the visuals here are so cool where they make the shield like the 300. And then the yeah. shield parts and the battering ram comes up and starts sla slamming it as, of course, the wall has already been breached down below. Uh, and what just... built that wall so strong because they did that practically and they couldn't take it down. Like they couldn't break it down. They were like, fuck, we built it too well. <laughs> um, that's another thing that I was thinking about today when, cool. the, or when I was watching them try to take this wall down or this door down. Why is it that they don't just like, I don't know, make a bunch of sliding doors that come out of the side. So instead of it being, you know, a, a three foot thick wall, it'd be like 10 feet of wood walls that mm. they're trying to go through. Kevin, Instead, you're talking about you, you mean like when the Jedi are in Force Awakens and they're trying to get into the ship and, and the, the door, giant the metal the doors, last doors are like, choo, 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 but yeah. it works. You know what I mean? Like yeah. eventually he's getting through it, eventually. but enough time, <laughs> enough time from the droid to cause to come out. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, it's exactly. True. Droid to cause. Um, let's see. With the wall breached, uh, Aragorn and elves square off to uh, uh, to basically just, uh, def def excuse me, defend the interior uh, until Gimli jumps down like an idiot and falls into a puddle of mud. This is also <laughs> where we get the amazing shot just to prove his superiority. Legolas sees that and goes, I'm just going to skate down this stairwell on a shield, on a root shield or an archer shield, I don't know, and then stab someone with the shield as I'm <laughs> shooting really arrows cool. at other people. It was really and cool. Gimli's Very like, impressive. man, I should not have started competing with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he is going to beat me. <laughs> uh, over in the forest, the Ents decide not to join the battle after all. He says, after all that time, this is not our war. And Mary argues uh, that they're a part of the world. The war is everyone's fight. Uh, Pippin, of course, wants to just go home. He's like, dude, we lost. Let's just go home to the Shire where everything's good. Mary's like, you are not. What are you not getting about this? If we don't get these guys to fight, if we don't fight right now, there will be no Shire left. Um, uh overrun of course uh back excuse me back of the deep overrun gamlin orders aragorn and his men to fall back to the keep uh haladar orders his men as well but before he can retreat he himself is cut down by an aruk soldier he falls dead into aragorn's arms uh then aragorn straight fucking punches an orc in the face he's so mad he just goes he and just punches a dude right <laughs> in the face and i'm like okay yeah sure yeah, why not it's, That's it's, 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 again it's like they're just sort of telling the audiences again that yeah elves can die and it's really weird when you see an elf die because they're immortal otherwise and they live forever but yeah if you fucking shoot one with arrows or if you stab them they will bleed and die it's crazy 
I uh, uh, I hate this particular elf, but the, this was like a strong moment to watch him die. Yeah. Like that, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, Wait, why do you hate him, Kevin? Sorry. Oh, he's got a stupid face, you know? He's oh, constantly yeah. walking Sorry. up. Kevin and, doesn't and like, like people with stupid faces. <laughs> but it's, it's also, thing. he's like the henchman of, uh, what's his face? Elrond, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, bruh. Yeah, chill the fuck oh, out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, I know what you mean, Kevin. Uh, of course, Theoden sees that the gates are about to fall, so he orders his men, and he himself goes to reinforce uh, the gate. Uh, and then Aragorn gets a good idea. He's like, listen, man, this, this is not going to hold. We got to get out there. We got to fight him. Uh, and th- th- apparently they've built a secret cute little door into the side of the wall here that leads out into uh, the rocks because Aragorn and uh, uh, Gimli head out there and they look over. And then, of course, Gimli goes, oh, man, that's a long way over there. I don't think I can make that. And Aragorn's <laughs> like, what do you want to do? And he goes, fuck, I toss me. This. He's like, you got to toss me. But don't tell the elf. The, de- <laughs> the delivery says, of it all. The so delivery good. of him going, toss me. And Aragorn being what <laughs> yeah. like, well, right right. <laughs> like it's so fucking good dude now this is now let me ask you guys this question of course this is an important question at least i'm gonna direct this toward you do you think that when this is all over there was a moment where aragorn pulled legolas aside and was like dude <laughs> i he, i had to toss him he wanted me to toss him absolutely not no aragorn has too much honor yeah and and is man of his word he would not there would be there would be be a point where somebody might I mean, he didn't even tell that woman her stew was bad. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. That's true. That, uh, that, that stew looked disgusting. I know her name. Yeah, that uh, stew looked so gross. But yeah, I, just, I love that. And I love just, you know, don't tell the elf and here's not a, a word. I won't say shit, bro. I got you. The question, if it was Andy, Andagorn and Tim Lee, mm-hmm. would Tim Lee say, Andagorn, I need you to toss me when Andagorn keep his word. I would not have kept no. the promise. No, I would have said no. it on the podcast that week. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. But to be fair, Andy would also be like this. When he says, don't, if, if Tim, Tim, Tim Lee said, don't tell the elf, uh, Andy would be like, no, I'm going to tell him. I'm not yeah. going to. Oh, There's no, no way I'm agreeing. I'm not agreeing to this at all. <laughs> this is your decision. You're either getting tossed and told or you're staying put. I'm telling Legolas for sure. I, I, didn't, I didn't know how effective that'd be as a sneak attack, you know? Like, how different is that from just jumping from the top? Well, I don't know, but I, I feel like it was just safer because it was a, a, a less of a distance to, to fall, I sure, guess, because the yeah, top, you sure. feel like you're falling 20 feet maybe, and this was like a lateral move. Right. Uh, but either way, they jump over there and they start repelling the forest fairly fairly well. Um, uh, let's see. Of course, they, they get as, – as they reinforce the wall, uh, Legolas says, hey, we're good. And then he throws down a rope and uh, Aragorn and Gimli swing away to safety, which is cool. Uh, and then – but the thing fucking falls down and Theoden orders everyone to retreat to the keep. Uh, over in the forest, Treebeard walks Merry and Pippin to the edge of the forest. He's like, I'm going to take you guys to the south of the forest. You guys can go home. But Pippin gets a better idea. And he says, you know, we, we should go toward uh, the route of Isengard uh, because the closer we get to dan- – the closer we are to danger, the farther we are from harm. And Tree Bird's like, I've never heard that before, and that sounds counterintuitive, but I'm a dumb tree, so but I'll you walk are you very over there small. real slow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Mary's like, what are you doing? And Pippin's like, I got a plan, dude. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. Over on the outskirts of, uh, what was it called? Os- Osgiliath? Yep. Osgiliath, okay. Uh, Faramir hurries Frodo and Sam into the city. Uh, when they reach the, okay, then we're back over to the forest. When they reach the outskirts of the forest, Treebird finally sees what Pippin intended for him to see. The forest of the south has been decimated by Saruman and his armies and the factory. And he says, Saruman, a wizard should know better. And then Treebeard roars and it is on, baby. And the whole forest comes alive. When Mary asks what they're all going, uh, what, what that's all about, Treebeard replies, they have business with the orcs. My business is with Isengard tonight with a rock and stone. With and I'm like, is he going to kill Saruman with a rock and stone? Because that's, that's <laughs> gonna a deep shit right there, man. Head in. He's going to bash his uh, head in. The, 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 just, that quick scene where they show Osgiliath, I'd mentioned this earlier, but you can see Minas Tirith in the back, mm-hmm. like really, really, really far away. Um, cool. And we don't see Minas Tirith, obviously, until part three. But uh, they said that when they showed that to New Line Cinema, they didn't have Minas Tirith in the background for the theatrical cut because New Line thought that that was Helm's Deep. And and New Line was like, oh, they're that close to Helm's Deep? Oh, so surely Frodo and Faramir and uh, and Sam, they're that close to Helm's Deep. They're probably going to go join the battle or something. And then they're like, no, 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 that's Minas Tirith. Never mind, we'll remove it. Fuck it, we'll remove it. <laughs> like, we don't want to confuse anybody about this. But it looked really, really cool to see like how small, but distance-wise, it, like, yeah, they're kind of close to each other. 
Uh, of course, he says, come, my friends, the Ents are going to war. It is likely we go to our doom last march of the Ents. Uh, Faramir brings Sam Last fr- march of the Ents. Which, yeah. hey, does that line make all the fucking tree stuff worth it? No. But is it cool as hell? Absolutely, man. Yes. I was like, yeah, let's go tree these motherfuckers up. And they yes. do. <laughs> and the music kicks in. Oh, love that. Uh, Faramir, of course, uh, eventually gets Sam, Frodo, and Smeagol into the city. And it is under siege. Just the cook. Uh, Frodo is having a hard, <laughs> hard going. Thank you, Nick. You're thank welcome. you for the. <laughs> thank you very much I did for the, the reference. <laughs> <laughs> a lowly, lowly cook. Just uh, the, cook. the ring is calling to Sauron. It's really taking its toll on Frodo. Faramir orders them brought before their father to present the ring, but Sam tells Faramir the truth about Bor. Mary says the ring drove him mad, uh, but it's it's all too late. Because guess what? None of this matters. The Nazgul have arrived, or at least one of them did. I thought it was like all of them, but I guess it's just one. Back at Helm's Deep, Theoden's numbers have dwindled. Uh, there's only one passage out of the mountain, so Aragorn tells Gamelin to send word to the women and children to make their way through the passage. And then once that's done, just blow up the door, barricade, whatever they got to do to get to safety. Uh, but Theoden is defeated. So much death. What can men do against such reckless hate? And then Aragorn what a goes, line. ride yeah. out with me. Ride out and meet them. This is so oh. hype <laughs> yes. and glory for Rohan for your people. And then uh, Gimli, of course, spots the sun rising uh, and Aragorn remembers uh, Gandalf's words. And he's like, oh, man, there is some hope. OK, what, what did he tell you? What did he say before, Tim? He was like, okay, take a left when you see the burned out tree. If you smell fish, you've gone too far. I can't remember what it, I, somebody did. Someone write this down. It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, Theoden gets his wits back about him and he digs deep for one final push. The horn of Helm Hammerhand hand. shall sound in the deep, deep one last time. Ah, so good. He puts his hand on Aragorn. Really cool. says, Let this be the hour when we draw swords together. Rallying his men, of course, as the doors start to uh, to break. He looks over and he sees fell, and he says, "Fell deeds awake. Now for wrath, now for ruin, and a red dawn." I don't know what any of that means. Tim. So fucking cool. Dude. The dawn will be red because it will be it will be cloaked in their blood. Yeah. Cool. Also, you know, they're gonna sing songs about this. What what a thing to say to someone before you're about to go out to your death. Uh, and of course, the doors give way, and as they give way, it's I love how this is edited because you think there's no time jump here. But the doors, like, it, they're doing a cool shot where it's like, you see the door starting to break, and he's giving this amazing monologue. And the door is starting to break, and he's like, let's fucking ride. Let's fucking get the shut up. And then the doors finally break down. And as it cuts back to them, they're all on their horses, mounted in all of their armor. And they just cut a fucking hole through these guys right down the ramp uh, into what you would assume would be less troops. But it turns out, man, that whole siege of the wall took 50 or 60 of the orcs with them. Because there's like, like 9,000 troops still left. At which point I'd be like, oh, man, we made a terrible mistake. We should have gone through that passage. <laughs> we should have gone <laughs> with Gamlin and his stupid poopy face. Um, Can I ask you a question, Nick? Sure. Thoughts on Gimli not riding out on a horse, but retreating to blow the horn. I mean, well, that's, you know, you got to give. First God. of all, first of all, we all know he can't ride on a horse. We saw him fall off earlier. You, you get on a horse that's too big for you, you're going to fall off. That's, you know. That's true. But, Kevin, this is also kind of like. In Last Jedi, where they're like, hey, Poe Dameron, the coolest fucking character in this whole franchise. Let's have you just be up in space. Let's not have you do anything cool. Like, utilize Gimli. Utilize Gimli. Andy, I mean, go ahead, Nick you, I'm sorry, Andy. Are you comparing Poe Dameron uh, to Gimli? And saying those well, characters are equal a, in your a brain? Use, a useful person, a fighter, a warrior, mm-hmm. someone who has a high mm-hmm. kill, Andy, kill count right now. Andy, you're making a great point. You're a horn blower, man. At least to answer your question, you give yes. I think it's I think it's great that they gave him something to do, and I think that I'm I'm, I'm magically surprised. I'm very surprised that he didn't fuck that up too. Yeah, he managed surprised. he managed to blow the horn and look at to much to my much to my surprise and chagrin. What is magically surprised? <laughs> I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. <laughs> didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Uh, of course, the doors go. We have this a great fucking moment where they go through the doors and they start cutting through everything. And then uh, as they get into the thick of it, we see a bright light over to the east. Out to the east at first dawn, Gandalf has arrived. Theoden, Woo! king, stands alone, he says. But he's not alone for long. Because who should ride up right next to him, Elise? Aomir. Aomir. Oh, Carl Urban. Yeah, and Carl as he Urban. says, <laughs> as, as Gandalf says, Theoden King, not alone. Carl Urban comes in and says, not alone. Not and alone. then Eomir summon, summons his riders, and there's like 2,000 of them, as we noted. And he says, to Pretty the cool. king. And Dude. they start riding down. And 
the, the slight... steepest hill of yeah, all time. Right. And I'm just like, these horses have like such like crazy ass balance, man. I'm very impressed with the horses in this movie. You know what? Hey, earlier I said MVP shout out to the ladders. Another shout the out to the horses. Not only were these horses drifting like the best of them, but also like they were really nice with their hands when they were playing with uh, uh, Aragon. Yeah. Tim, I don't think you can have more than one MVP of a series, but I don't know much about sports. Andy, can you have multiple MVPs of a game? You can have co-MVPs. I think he's, yeah. he's throwing out a Nami is what he's saying. For okay, the okay. Well, we'll have two co-MVPs then. No, uh, not, he's nominating them. He's not, oh, he's only nominating them. Yeah, but the yeah. ladders are still the MVPs. Well, no, the, those were also nominated. We have to vote. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to tell you right now, no I'm vote. not voting for any there's no vote? object. Tim, or, there's no vote? Horse. No, I no, said he said no vote. He said he's throwing it out. That's what well, he said. I'm gonna so throw a nominee just... right now. Give it, me Arwen's, Arwen's necklace. Okay, I'll take the it. stew. The... <laughs> the... <laughs> no, you know what? No, at least not the stew. The little globby fucking part of thing that he put it, like from the stew. It was so gross. I don't know, like dude. Gross. What was that? It was Ugh. like chicken fat that hadn't rendered Ugh. properly. Ugh. Ugh. Oh god, oh, it's disgusting. Anyway, dialing it back in. Of course, as the writers go down the hill, I wanted. I noted this because I thought it was. So cool. Gandalf is, of course, leading the charge with Carl Urban and the light from his staff. At first, they're like, oh, the soldiers down below are like, oh, we got this, dude. There's more of us. Than and then the light from his staff starts to blind them. And they're like, oh, my God, who, 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 what asshole dropped the flashbang while I'm trying to kill a predator, Andy? Uh, <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God, what's Fran. going on? It was it's, Fran. Always, it's always Fran. Fran's dropping smoke. And I'm like, the predator, Elise, the predator has heat vision. It can it see through great. smoke. The only I people dropped. that can't on, see Fran. anything is me. It was me. I dropped this one. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Andy. Uh, Saruman watches, of course. Uh, okay, and this is the great part, too. So over at Isengard, the Ents come through the forest. And they start tearing shit up. They destroy the dam, uh, releasing the river's raging Release current on river. Isengard below. <laughs> and the cleansing tide overtakes the orc's weapon factory and washes all of that away. Saruman watches from the tower as all this is unfolding below him. And he's like, oh, no. I <laughs> look, he's, up there, he's like, oh, this is not good. This is, is not good. We talk about that one. That one tree that's lit on fire, and then when the river's released, he can put his head out. <laughs> yeah, that's I my love favorite. That. Did you notice that, Tim? No. Yeah. There, so there's oh. like a, there's one of the trees gets shot with fire arrows, and he gets lit yeah. on fire. And then in the director's commentary, Peter Jackson's like, "I love that," but then I was like, "Well, that's gonna scare little kids. We can't have this like that's we can't see this kids. tree getting scared yeah. on fire yeah, or whatever." Yeah, so yeah. then when the water rushes through. And and everybody's kind of like breaks down. He like yeah. I did see that. I, I thought they were different ones though. I didn't realize that. I thought no, I thought that dude. dude died. I thought one of the trees straight up. Oh uh, no, same dude, same dude. He lived. Good for him. I I I don't see any end fatalities when I watch it. There's the one that's like getting hacked at by mm -hmm. by but like orcs of Axis, but he gets out. Yeah, he's like fucking up people for sure. Yeah. Mm. Uh, back over with Fredo and Sam. Oh, excuse me, not Fredo. Frodo and Sam. Frodo is overtaken <laughs> by. The desire to put the ring on, but Sam once again saves him from himself. Enraged, Frodo pulls out Sting and turns it on Sam. And he says, no, 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 don't you recognize him? It's me. It's your Sam. Uh, and Frodo can't do this. It's too hard. He, he drops. He's like, damn, I'm sorry, man. My bad. Uh, but this is really hard. I can't do this anymore. But Sam sympathizes. Uh, and I love this little moment here. He says, uh, by right, we shouldn't be here, but we are. It's like in those great stories, the ones that really matter. Sometimes you didn't want to know the ending. How could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. And man, it's a hell of a pep talk. I'm like, yeah, wow, yeah, I, I don't believe it. You guys can do this. I'm like um, crying right now, dude. I know. Oh my God, I love and, all of this. I also love how horrifying it looks when the Nazgul is getting that close to him. Yeah. And you see him like trying to put on the ring and like, the size uh, uh, differential is just so fucking terrifying. And then Sam comes to the rescue, MVP. Yeah. And uh, Sam, of course, goes, I understand now. Folk in those stories had a lot of chances to turn back, but they kept going and they were because they were holding on to something. And when asked what were they holding on to, Sam, Sam replies, uh, there's some good in the world and, uh, and it's worth fighting for. I oh, my God. I cry uh, every time. I'm just like I'm in sorry. tears every time Frodo I watch this Sam. part, dude. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, that, that exchange was backward. I think Frodo said that to Sam. Uh, anyway, uh, Faramir saw this whole, sees this whole thing, goes down and finally gets it. And he walks over to Frodo and says, at last we understand one another, Frodo Baggins. Uh, and with that, he lets them go. Uh, uh, excuse me. But if... Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. So he's like, we, you guys can go. And then one of his guys who's just randomly standing there was like, hey, man, if you let him go, your life will be forfeited. And then he says, well, then it is forfeited. Release them. To which I'm like, wow, his dad's going to kill him? That's kind of, I don't know. It's just like just, the... the the respect and reverence that they pay to Faramir, like Sam, especially too, 
it like gets me so much mm-hmm. because it's like it's what Faramir's never gotten and and he did show his quality. Yeah. And I goosebumps. Goosebumps. There you go. Uh, there you go. But then well, he still treats kind of, Smeagol like like shit. So yeah. like, well, not, I mean not fully redeemed. But I, I do feel like there's a little bit of uh where he's like, Wait, where are you guys going? And then he grabs me and he's like, What the fuck are you doing? Like, you know that shit is yeah. dangerous. There's a giant right. thing over there that we're gonna just kind of you know, it's something scary. Yeah. Um, of course, the, we go back to the battlefield where the riders of Rohan uh, and Carl Urban's people are chasing the remaining uh, surviving orcs into the trees. And as they're about to chase them, someone's like, well, hold up. Check what <laughs> you're going you're gonna to watch this. What happens? And as all the orcs go in there, the trees just start decimating them, probably doing unspeakable things to them. But we don't know what happens in Fangorn. You have Fangorn. to imagine it's like what happened to uh, Mary when like the trees started like eating him. Remember? Yeah, they just like envelop them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, over at Isengard, Merry and Pippin watch as Saruman freaks out in his little tower, and then they find some of the best pipe weed in the land and get high. Uh, Faramir leads the hobbits to the sewer, and this is where that scene happens you guys are talking about, where Sam turns to them and says, you've shown your quality, sir, the very highest. Uh, Frodo tells them that the path they're going to take to Mordor, uh, but Faramir is like, oh, wait a minute, I know that path, and there's some core, like, some really dark, terrible things on that path, uh, but but he's like, it's the only one we gotta go. The, the Smeagol's taking us there, it's the only path we can possibly take. Minas uh, Morgul. What a cool Minas, fucking yeah. word. Uh, uh, also, the, uh, the pipe weed part, uh, Peter Jackson mentioned that Saruman... W- thought of himself to be like higher than Gandalf, and and was always kind of surprised with Gandalf's liberalism with just smoking whatever, and so he would traffic pipe weed from the Shire or from Hobbiton or from wherever, and have it take it to him. And like he didn't really want people to know that he was smoking, but at night that he would just like toke up and shit. So he's like <laughs> he's all closet pothead. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, Faramir bids them good well. It says, go, Frodo, go with good uh, the goodwill of all men. But before he lets them go, Faramir offers one final word of caution to Smeagol. It says, may death find you quickly if you bring them to harm. Uh, once in the sewers, Sam tries to smooth things over with Smeagol. Where he's like, hey, man, you know, we were like, like he wasn't serious about that whole getting your ass kicked thing, right? Like, Master has your best intentions in mind. And Smeagol's like, yeah, dude, don't worry about it. We're totally cool. He's like, no hard feelings? He's like, no, no hard feelings <laughs> whatsoever. Uh, and then he immediately develops a plan with himself where he's like, here's how this shit's going to go down. That but- thing that's waiting for us, we're going to let that thing kill Master, and then we're going to take our ring back. And then and then Smeagol's like, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in yeah. on this plan. I, this, to get my was, ass beat. this was added in the, th- in the extended, right? Because I don't remember Sam showing any sort know, of kindness a, any sort of kindness towards towards Schmeagel. i'm pretty sure this that was all added right i don't remember that being in the theatrical version because you just sort of assume sam's always a dick to smeagol because he kind of knows and assumes that smeagol's up to some bullshit Can't and Gollum's him. gonna eventually pop out but then for him to be like hey man you know you know frodo didn't really mean that he was trying to save you he didn't yeah. want them to do that to you and so he's like yeah of course i'm, I'm good i'm good yeah uh, we do get a wonderful moment here, of course, between uh, strengthening the bond between Sam and Frodo. As they walk, Sam wonders if their story will be put into a tale that fathers will tell their children. Uh, and Frodo gives Sam some major props because he's like, oh, you know how brave Frodo is. But Frodo's like, what about, don't forget about Sam Wise the brave. Frodo wouldn't have gotten very far without him. Fuck and Sam's how? like, Sam Sam's like the brave. it's nice. It's nice. I'm just uh, crying course. at this point again. Just to, to yeah. hear him so proud being like, Samwise the Brave. Like, yeah. oh, it's so good, yeah. dude. It's so like, it's just so heartwarming and so it's so pure. All of this is so great, man. Of course, that's happening, and again, juxtaposing that with the raging battle that's happening in conversation with, with Smeagol and Gollum, where he's like, basically, here's the plan: we're gonna let these things walk to their death, and as they're dying, we're gonna take the ring back to them. Uh, and then he pops out, and they're like, "Where did Smeagol go?" And he pops out. He goes, "Come on, hobbits, long way to go yet. Smeagol will show you the way." Man, and that's it. There you go. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. In review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form just like Sam Mosher did. Elise is correct. Scarpino, don't disrespect. Helm's Deep is perfect. I love that. He wanted it to <laughs> That's rock. really good. Deep in the helm. Did he want you to, to enunciate fact I, in there? I imagine. I imagine. Okay, right? cool. uh, Chance Carter says, Legolas mounts horse. Aragorn, alive, of course. Gimli, tossed on porch. <laughs> <laughs> real good, real good. Uh, let's see. 
uh, Tom, just Tom, <laughs> says, Helm's Deep has fallen. Gandalf and horse save the day. Blaze it with the ants. <laughs> and uh, the final one I'm going to do here is John Lestrina. Remember Sam's words. The world has some good in it. It's worth fighting for. There we go. Man, that, that line just every time. Like, anytime I'm like in a, in a rough place mentally, I just think of Sam's words right there. It's just so awesome. Yeah, oh, Andy, if you'd buddy. like, I'll be your Sam Wise the Brave. Every time you want, I'll just pop up and like help you get Would up. Would you like that, Andy? I would, would not know. I, I think <laughs> I Andy's that. his own Samwise. I think Andy's the, the hero of his own story. Thank you, Elise. Thank you. Is that I'll be your baggy baggy? Gonna be your golem, Andy. You can beat me up. Nick, a you're the doors. We we already we established. <laughs> <You're> the <doors. laughs> Who wants to open me, Kevin? Who wants oh to open me? Oh my god! Open me! Open me! Can I? Can I ask for like for you guys that like hadn't seen this movie in a long time or? you know didn't really weren't really familiar with it how do you how did you feel and you you can be honest with me I, I, again i'm a good Please. sport about your jokes that R- real quick we'll, we'll we'll do that in a second um because I, I like the collective thoughts towards the end um but tim are you ready for me to go yeah, raggy baggy. Oh, i'm okay. sorry i'm sorry what's up everybody welcome back to rad guys talk bad guys here for lord of the rings uh of course if you guys are not familiar with this this is the podcast within a podcast where we rank all of the bad guys in a series right now starting off with uh lord of the rings the fellowship of the ring at number one we have saruman and lertz who is and the army those are the bad guys who do we want to say is the bad guy here is it saruman again maybe it's got to be right uh, i think it's i would say urukai in general did you yeah, say the Uruk guy? They're moments to shine. Okay. Yeah, because we didn't have uh, a whole lot of Saruman. Like, even though he's kind of the the evil behind it all, he's the one who sends him over there. Yeah, but the whole true. time, it's just You're these Uruks. Solid point, yeah, he was just on the balcony, like. Yeah. Where do and we want to? Really, and there's that also really bad CG where he like kind of looks out of the tower, and it's like a terrible matte painting. Really, with, really like, bad. Yeah. And it looks like Kevin. It looks like a matte painting that was drawn it like maybe 112 by 112 resolution and, and they, they just, just scale it up and like it'll but be fine Saruman is like hella clear in it it just yeah. looks really really bad like put a little sharpen and blur on that bad boy we'll yeah uh where do we want to put the Urukai army in uh in is it number one or number two for you guys it's number I one feel, for me i think i feel like the uh the the battle is so good that yeah it, i think it has to go to number yeah. one and it just sucks that, that like it is no longer the longest battle and instead it's replaced by the st- stupidest episode of game of thrones that doesn't count it's tv and tv is inferior uh it really cool does. all right we will uh, add the list as it stands right now number one the urukai from the two towers number two Sar- saruman and lurts and the army from the fellowship of the ring now tim uh mm-hmm. is this what we vote on mvp or did we already say mvp is the ladders well it's, <laughs> mvp is just kind of us shouting things out at this okay. point oh yeah. okay cool, cool. Number yeah, two, yeah. I mean, ladders, have their own mvp ladders and horses from two towers, but okay. So now it's time to rank the Lord of the Rings movies. So Elise, what what were you getting at a second ago? Oh, I I was just really curious to see how how your uh, feelings toward this movie may, may, may have changed or like. I mean, oh, like, I was curious. The, the as a big fan, of- was awesome, and I feel like it definitely was like a nice kind of reward for the lore and for everything kind of going into it. And I had a really good time with with the choreography and the the score. And this movie has so many hype mo- moments. Like the first one had a couple, but this one is just kind of like it just delivers and keeps delivering. And I'm really excited to see how they take that further into the final one. Because usually for trilogies of things, like the second one's a bit more of a downer, and then they, you know, the third one's the like celebratory, like everything's great. And I feel like this one kind of delivered on that in, in many ways. Um, but having said that. I think that I like Fellowship more than than this. I think the battle of this is great. The rest of it, I don't want to say is boring, but I wasn't as enthralled. And I feel like they, it, we got to a point where it kind of felt like season two or three of a show where, okay, now we're introducing a whole new cast of characters. And I'm like, there's already so many characters. I can't really keep track of Carl Urban. Like, it's just, it just starts to feel like there's armies and armies and armies. And I, I was already kind of struggling to keep up uh, in the first place. But... I feel like that's just natural when you introduce characters because once we get to the third one, I feel like I'll know these guys in the same way that now in the second one, I knew the guys from the first. Andy. Uh, fun fact about Carl Urban, at the very, very end when they sort of show everybody after the battle and they kind of crest this hill, uh, 
in the in the commentary, I forgot which director it was. Like, hey, Peter, who's that writer on the far left? And Peter Jackson's like, that's um, that is Aomer's double that we forgot to replace his head. We were supposed to put Carl Urban's head on top of Aomer's body double, <laughs> and we just forgot. So now he's just a uh, captain of the third rank infantry. <laughs> he just started making up some bullshit. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty awesome. neat. Uh, I kind funny. of I, I I kind of agree with Tim where I feel like we've we've talked about this and I've I've made this point so many times throughout every in review we've ever done where I think fellowship is more consistently good. It's more consistently like an A for me where Two Towers um, has those S tier moments, mm-hmm. but and so the, the it has higher highs. But for the most part, I feel like. I am, again, just like Tim, I don't want to say that I'm bored with the end stuff. It's just not as interesting to watch as a lot of Fellowship, where Fellowship goes between all these different backstories and, and like, even their B-plots or whatever that are happening are still really good and enthralling. And I just never really felt that with Two Towers, even though we get, again, the coolest battle I think I've ever seen on on screen and awesome hype moments. Um, I, I think I would put Fellowship over Two Towers. And uh, the the last thing I want to say about my thoughts on this are I think that really the thing that put, gives me fellowship over Two Towers is the end. Like when Fellowship ended, I was like, I I want to watch Two Towers right now. Mm-hmm. When this one ends, I'm kind of like, I I don't really need like Return of the King. When it, when I watch it, I watch it. I'm not like foaming at the mouth for it. And I think it's just because it's not really a cliffhanger. It's not really like a, we're about to go fucking do this. It's kind of like. All right, so Smeagol's gonna take the Hobbits to another place where there's a, a scary creature, like. It just doesn't feel like I'm getting something new or something that like we're building towards. It's like, okay, we've been talking about getting this thing to the the mountain for so long that like that doesn't that's not exciting anymore. And it's like, okay, cool. Now Aragorn and like the, the main three heroes, like they they won the battle. So it's kind of yeah. like if they can win this, they can win anything. Yeah, it does feel like there's kind of a like a relief at the end of this where the other one is like, Oh shit, the journey's about to start, shit's gonna get crazy in the next movie. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I, I, I'm in the same boat as you. Like, obviously, this movie has this fight scene that's really cool, but it also has a lot of moments for me that where it's like, great, we're, we're hanging out in this tree, walking with these people, talking, and it's like, all right, cool, stupid trees, you know what I mean? Oh, now the tree's upset, and now he's yelling. Suddenly, all these other trees are coming out of nowhere. Why is, why are they so fast to get here now? You know what I mean? I mean, I still love the theme. I love the, the themes of all of it. I, I appreciate the... You know, uh, the the anti-war, anti. No, hey, hey man, look, it's cool that, that someone's trying to make me think. But right now, I just want to see people fighting. You know what I mean? Cut back yeah, to the fighting. Feel, I feel you, Kim. I feel you. Elise, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I have years and years and years of built-up bias that it has established my love of this film. That being said, I do think like doing this dive with you guys, I see some of the shortcomings that you acknowledge in it Gimli? and some of those that i pardon gimli gimli i mean yeah gimli not he's not the strongest of yeah, the shortcomings. Sorry, it was a short joke never mind and, Gim- gimli's pretty and strong like, it's pretty impressive you know what i mean like i said when i used to rewatch helm's deep all the time i would i would fast forward through so many non boring Steep tree parts yeah i get it um to, like andy saying that the, the s tier moments when the highs are high they are they are soaring that's sort of, sort of where I'm at. It's it's for me. It's the most emotionally charged of the movies, save for some parts in Return of the King, and it it hits me on an emotional level in so many ways that in terms of the my favorite one, I, it still remains. I, I can't shake that, but I do see, uh, you know, structurally and in terms of points of interest, what you guys are are saying. I I I, I could be the, you know, I see that that the stew isn't. Stu's got some clumps in it. <laughs> I see that. I see that. It's got some lumpy f- yeah. chicken fat. Yeah. yeah. Nick, where are you I at? Like that um, I mean, everyone knows that after a lot of uh, Fellowship of the Ring, this thing is just all fucking downhill and it just spirals down into <laughs> just a terribly boring. No, I'm kidding. Uh, this was actually a lot more fun for me to watch the second time around. And I think it's because I was able to watch it at home and watch it in two parts. And we did watch the extended versions, which I'm, I, I am beside myself with joy that I'm getting way more out of. I thought it was going to be the opposite. In fact, I remember Tim, remember how much shit I gave you. I was like, we're going to watch fucking 19 hours of Lord of the Rings. (laughs) Thoroughly enjoying them. But thankfully we all decided to break them up into two parts. Um, 
so I I enjoyed it, but I do kind of agree that Fellowship is more fun, and it's unfortunate because it's just what Fellowship is about. There's nothing more fun to me than getting the team together. You know, there's nothing more fun to me than like than watching Fast Avengers. Five. You know, Fast Five, getting the family finally together. Everyone's like, Jordana Brewster, you're pregnant. Fuck, get in the car. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Get in the car. We're gonna go fight some bad guys. You're pregnant? Three months? Ah, this baby's probably fine. At three months, and people don't know this, when you're pregnant, kids are impenetrable. They're like fucking adamantium in your stomach. Uh, um, so but no, it's it's super fun, and obviously there's more mystery, and the world just seems more dangerous. And in this one, of course, we're seeing the dangers, and it's not. You know, it's kind of the old suspense myth of like, what's more, like, it's more, it's scarier to not see something. And then when you finally see it, you're like, oh, it's a fucking monster. I think the battle is super well choreographed in this. The end stuff, I understand. I'm just giving, I'm giving Tolkien crap. I, I get why it's put in there. It's put in there for pacing. It's put in there for the same reason why Professor Umbridge was put in Order of the Phoenix. You're supposed to feel frustrated at those moments. Uh, like Andy said, uh, you're supposed to feel for Mary. You're supposed to be Mary and Pippin in those moments and be like, ah, God, just get in the fight, man. Uh, so when they do, of course, it's very fulfilling um, and validating. But I just feel like Fellowship is, to me, it's just a more fun story. Um, and this, for a middle act, does drag a little bit. But, you know, that's like, it, it's still good. All right, now it's time to vote. Fuck, who thinks this is so hard? Who thinks that the Lord of the Rings Two Towers is better than Fellowship of the Ring? Raise your I'm hand. Just, I'm just thinking of Lee saying, like, all the emotionally impacting lines and moments in this. But think I'll, about Fellowship. I'll go with the Two Towers better than Fellowship. I, I, I can't help it. I just, I just, Helm's Deep is a, it's a monumental it's a feat. feat. Yeah. So are you raising your hand, Elise? Yeah, I, I have to. Anyone else raising their hand? It's got the yeah. doors, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it's got everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah. The rankings of Lord of the Rings so far. Number one, Fellowship of the Ring. Number two, Two Towers. We will return on uh, Tuesday with Star Trek Into Darkness and then next Friday with Return of the King Part 1. Very exciting stuff. Elise, thank you very much for joining us once again. Thank you so much. I love it. I love my I week. Love and, okay. rest, and rest in peace, Sir Ian Holm, everybody. Rest in peace. Oh, R.I.P. Bad news. Very, very sad. Our Bilbo. Our Bilbo. Until next time. Uh, for wrath and for ruin. <laughs>